Live from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, it's the North American Soccer League. Today's game features FC Edmonton against the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Coming to you right now. Today's game is brought to you by the Fath Group, building Alberta for more than 50 years. By High Signs, let's light it up. And by Earthwater, the official water of FC Edmonton. Welcome to Clark Stadium, Edmonton. Beautiful day for a game this afternoon, the second last game of the season for FC Edmonton at home to high-flying Tampa Bay today in Alberta's capital. Lovely conditions. FC Edmonton hoping to end the season on a high note after a bit of a struggling season. Good afternoon. I'm Gareth Hampshire alongside Steve Sandor. Bit of a patched up team today, Steve, but the Eddies really hoping to uh, play for pride in front of the fans. Yeah, the big challenge today is going to be Kevin Hatchie moving to the center back position alongside Chris Cooey, who hasn't played a lot in the last little while. Uh, David Proctor and uh, Paul Hamilton, the normal uh, people we see back there in the center of the defense are both hurt today. So uh, it, it's going to be a real challenge and some guys trying to, to make some points for next season. FC Edmonton against the Tampa Bay Rowdies today. And the league standings looking good for Tampa Bay at the moment. There they are in second place. 11 victories for them. And you can see uh, not good reading the league table for the Eddies rooted to the bottom. Yeah, and now with uh, with Atlanta getting a result yesterday, that uh, that changes everything in terms of Edmonton's uh, position. You don't want to finish the season in last place, but that's uh, Edmonton's going to need some points in, in order to, to make that uh, not happen. And for Tampa Bay, huge game today. Puerto Rico is level with them on points, even though Tampa's got a couple of games in hand, but they need to make use of those games in hand so they can get a bye and miss that first round of the playoffs and jump in, in the second round. So huge game for Tampa today. It means a lot to them. For, for the Eddies, they're playing for pride, so it should be an interesting matchup. Kyle Porter will be hoping his form continues. He really hit his stride in the last home game. Let's take a look at the highlights from that one. Here we see the start right off the top of the game. Uh, Lance Parker was struggling with his goal kicks, and here we see one that he gives away right to Ty Shipolani, and Shipolani da dashes down the right side. Nick Zimmerman sneaks in at the back post, and, and it's really an easy finish uh, as, as Edmonton didn't respond well to the giveaway. But it was a wide open game, and there were giveaways on both sides, and we see Adam West playing a wonderful ball up the wing for Michael Cox. And, and here we see Michael Cox is given all sorts of time to make the cross, and no one marks Kyle Porter in the middle. So really not very, very much a defensive clinic that we saw out there on, uh, on, uh, in midweek be uh, between Carolina and Edmonton. Even there again, a uh, bit of a defensive slip up that Porter was able to seize on. Yeah, Agbusa Monday in the uh, Carolina backline had a nightmare of an evening, giving the ball away pretty regularly and uh, just not looking assured at all. And then we saw the giveaway there led right to the Porter goal. Zimmerman again making this break forward and just getting a nice finish there. Two goals for him, two for Porter. 
Yeah, the key there was Paul Hamilton blocked the first shot, came out, and no one filled his spot, and Zimmerman had a quick, uh, an easy-looking goal there. Steve Sandor and Gareth Hampshire live from Clark Stadium. Let's take a look at the keys to the game. This afternoon, the Eddies against Tampa. Here's Steve. In uh, the last home game here against the Carolina Railhawks, Coach Harry St. Gravin was really unhappy about some of the uh, the square passes in midfield field, field and giveaways that this team made to give Carolina some easy chances. Here we see early in the game, Lance Parker with a weak goal kick that goes nowhere near an FC Edmonton player and right to Carolina's Ty Shipolani who goes around the right wing, and Edmonton is slow to react to the play, and it's just a square ball to, to Nick Zimmerman to finish uh, what's an easy goal on a giveaway for, for the Carolina Railhawks. The motivation factor, Edmonton doesn't have much to play for, actually nothing to play for the last couple of games of the year, other than pride, the fans, owner, and really jobs next year, contracts. Tampa has everything to play for, but still, Edmonton has got to, to be the best team it can be today, and the motivation has got to be there. And we have uh, both Kyle Porter and Harry St. Gravin talking about that motivation. Well, we know um, it's pride. Uh, we just have to finish strong. Uh, like I said before, we um, we have a great owner, great fans, and we just want to give back to them. They've uh, stuck with us through thick and thin, and you know it's our time to give back to them and win some games. We have our pride. We want to win every game, and uh, also we want to respect uh, from our fans. So, yeah, there's still a lot of things to to uh, to work for and to uh, to win for. We put a lot of effort in in the whole season, and uh, yeah, and still two games to go. Well, you want to uh, want to win those games. And then you see Kyle Porter's goal there just shows that there is some motivation there with Edmonton getting two goals in the last game. And as well, getting stuck in the game against Carolina on both sides, there wasn't a lot of tackling involved. I don't know if that's that's a situation of the way the game was played. It was a very loose game. But Tampa's a team that can score goals on you, and you got to get stuck in on them. And it's going to be the challenge for what's going to be a new center, center, central defensive pairing today to get physical, to get stuck in, to not give Tampa Bay easy possession. They're going to need to tackle. They're going to need to be on form, and they're going to have to be physical. And we have Kyle Porter talking about that physical team but I just have to you know mentally prepare for the the battles that I'm gonna be in on Sunday and um, I think that I just have to you know work hard and um, give it my all you know just be patient and hope that the goals will come FC Edmonton against the Tampa Bay Rowdies at Clark Stadium this afternoon let's take a look at the starting lineups today for Edmonton John Smith's in goal. Parker drops to the bench. A different central defensive pairing. Chris Cooey and Kevin Hatchie will play there. There's no Hamilton today. Augustan drops to the bench. Rago at right back. West at left back. A midfield three of Caseros, Dominic Pong back in the team, and Brian Arguez. And a front three, Bartholomew, Cox, and the informed Porter. Yeah, and Sean Seiko left the last game with a, an injury in the second half, and then he's not dressed today. And obviously, when the matches don't, don't mean anything in the standings for you, you're not going to risk any of your players who are carrying knocks or carrying maybe slight injuries, where if the game had meaning, you might be playing those players. So it, it, you, you err on the side of caution this time of year. You don't want to turn uh, an injury into something that could be long-term and, and an effective player for next season. Tampa going with a strong lineup today. Let's take a look at their starting 11. Jeff Antonella in goal. A back four of Campbell, Rodriguez, Yamada, and Arango. Shane Hill, the coach's son, Ricky Hill, he gets a start alongside Keith Savage and Luke Mulholland. Evans Frimpong rounding out the midfield. Daniel Antoniuk, the former Eddies player, up front alongside Mike Ambersley. Antoniuk, who scored the first ever winning goal in FC Edmonton history last year against the Fort Lauderdale Strikers. And Andre Zarango, Canadian, coming up back back home to, to play with uh, with the Rowdies today and Stuart Campbell another player to watch uh, he had maybe one of the most fabulous goal line clearances I've seen on a Paul Hamilton uh, drive uh, a, 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 a header off the line as he was jumping backwards uh, in the last game in Tampa and it was uh, just an outstanding play uh, and uh, that was something to see FC Edmonton against the Tampa Bay Rowdies is coming up live after the break years Rohit Communities has been building homes in Edmonton and area offering a variety of home styles including 
duplexes, townhomes, bungalows, apartment condos, and single-family homes. Rohit Communities can be found in 12 locations. More information is available at rohitcommunities.com. Edmonton. The officials for today's match are... Good atmosphere at Clark Stadium for this one. FC Edmonton against the Tampa Bay Rowdies, a team they've not been able to beat this season. Tampa winning three out of three head-to-head -head matchups, all by one goal to nil. So Edmonton have not actually scored a goal yet against Tampa Bay this season. They're playing all in white again today. And the Rowdies in green with the yellow trim. They're in second place. They've got a strong defense, and they've been scoring goals as well. So this should be a good matchup this afternoon, and the conditions perfect for a game. It's a lovely fall afternoon in Edmonton today. 15 degrees and uh, not very much wind, not much chance of rain either. So nice conditions for the match on this Sunday afternoon. Yeah, for our American friends watching, it's uh, in the Fahrenheit, it would be in the high 50s, low 60s right now. So perfect temperatures for soccer. Um, could ask for a nicer autumn afternoon here in Edmonton. There's a light breeze, but I don't think it's going to affect uh, the, the match very much. Not like we've seen some previous matches here where the winds uh, played havoc with uh, with the team. So as good conditions as, as you could hope for and uh, looking forward to uh, what I think should be a pretty in interesting encounter. John Smith's uh, going to start in goal for FC Edmonton today. He's just uh, getting his gloves uh, properly uh, pulled on there, ready for the match this afternoon. He's back in the team. Lance Parker dropping to the bench. And Smith's, when we've seen him this year, has looked like he's uh, a good prospect. Yeah, John Smith's was uh, the best keeper in Canadian University Soccer last year at the University of Toronto. And he came to, to Edmonton's camp, and because he's a Canadian University prospect, really came as the number four goalkeeper on the depth chart and clearly established himself, maybe not even as a number two, but maybe a 1B to Lance Parker's 1A. Lance Parker coming back on a serious injury, wasn't able to play a lot early in the year, had some injuries in mid-season as well. And John Smith has stepped in and, and done an admirable job and really is a, a goalkeeping uh, prospect that we look for in the future, not just uh, not just for SD Edmonton, but I think for Canada. Uh, just, just a player who is very assured, very calm back there, Real safe hands, and uh, I think uh, someone who I would probably call FC Edmonton's rookie of the year. Smith's getting the start in goal then. The players have just been in a huddle. They're ready to kick us off for this first half of action. FC Edmonton defending the goal to our right, and we'll be attacking from right to left as we look down from the commentary position here. Porter moving away from the center spot and leaving the kickoff for Tampa Bay. Luke Mulholland will get things underway, and there we go, straight away Tampa coming to attack Edmonton immediately as they uh, carry the ball into the Eddie's half, Ambersley, and towards the edge of the penalty area, Antonio, we know all about him, takes a snapshot over the crossbar, Smith's not troubled by that, and it is an early goal kick for FC Edmonton. We saw Luke Mulholland there with the kickoff, and that's a player who just always seems to torment uh, FC Edmonton. Uh, there's a few players here in the Tampa lineup that have just tend to have some of their strongest performances uh, when they do play Edmonton. I, I, Mulholland is always a player I look out for. Uh, you know, we talk about uh, Ricky, uh, Ricky Hill's son, Shane Hill. That's a player who maybe doesn't always play all the time, but when he seems to play against Edmonton, his size and strength causes this team fits. Antonio winning a free kick against Kevin Hatchie, who'd been sucked out from that central defensive area more into a left back position, concedes the free kick just in from this right hand touch line. And it's a good chance for Tampa to put some pressure on early. And it is that man, Luke Mulholland, that's going to take it right footed. Just uh, trying to get the one man wall, which is Sarah Say Bartholomew, moved back the correct 10 yards. The Linesman just having a word there, and the cross comes in now from Mulholland to the near post. Flick header, it's going to be cleared by FC Edmonton and brought out of defense very well indeed. Charging run by Arguez, who gets to halfway and then slips the ball down that right channel. Porter's chasing it. It's going to be a last-ditch tackle from Yamada, who came across there to snuff out that counter-attack. 
from FC Edmonton. Good presence of mind by Arguez on the break, and Porter again showing that he's really in good nick at the moment, scoring goals and getting himself in good positions. And with that speed he's got, he's a constant threat when he plays like this. He's they're trying to play him in again here with the Rago throw in. He loses out possession this time, and Tampa clear it to Antonio. He's a very strong target man, and he holds that ball up well. But Hatchie will sneak the interception. He's lost out there, though. Early break for Tampa here, coming into the penalty area, and Smith getting down at the feet to make the save there. And that was uh, a moment of concern as Frimpong had a real chance. The back stretched a little bit there. Yeah, and, and we talked about uh, the, the new central defensive pairing of Hatchie and, and Kui in the, in the back. And Hatchie there gets caught in possession. Two Tampa players on him. He's got to play that ball a lot quicker. And, and instead, he gives that ball away. And if that rolls a little more kindly for Frimpong and Smiths can't get out, there's a real chance there. But Smiths is brave there. And the one thing that John Smiths does very well is read plays very quickly and is a good decision maker. And he realized, I have to get out there and make that play right away. Nil-nil at the other end. Porter trying to make something happen, but cleared away from him by Tampa, and it's Antoniuk on the right-hand side, level with the edge of the penalty area, just trying to move in from the touchline. They release Mulholland on the right wing, overlap, cross coming into the far post. Antoniuk with the bobbling shot that Smiths got in front of, gathered it and made the save. It was a bit of an awkward one. What we're seeing right now is Tampa's being able to get a man at the top of the box free. Uh, they're occupying the defenders deep, and then they're slipping in a man to the top of the area. That time was Antoniuk, who's uh, getting in between the midfielders in the back four, and is creating a lot of space. Porter breaking into the box here with a pass from Cerise Barthelemy, moving in from the left-hand side, took it on his uh, left foot but sliced it wide of the post when he was trying to shoot it across the goalkeeper. <laughs> it really looks like we're picking up where the Carolina game on Wednesday left off. A uh, very wide open game so far. We're seeing a lot of uh, space out there uh, and not, not a lot of players getting stuck in again. I mean, it's early on in the match, but we're seeing uh, a lot of space, a lot of open uh, lanes for passing and uh, a lot of openings for shots. So uh, I have a feeling the goals might be coming again today. The home crowd trying to get behind the eddies as Smith comes to the edge of his penalty area to gather another through ball and has the ball safely in his hands. Four minutes on the watch at Clark Stadium, and it's nil-nil so far. Smith takes a couple of bounces and then half volleys that over halfway. Cox is beaten in the air, but the ball runs out for a throw-in to the eddies. Yeah, pass to the goal. <laughs> Rago's going to take it and uh, quickly follow. Kenny Caseros in there with a pass back to him. The ball goes up the right wing, and Porter gets his head on it, but that one will drift through for the goalkeeper, Jeff Atanella, who just uh, keeps things ticking over for Tampa Bay, and they bring the ball out of defense up this right-hand touch line to the edge of the Eddie's penalty area. Hatchie watching his man well, making a good interception, and it's Dominic Apong who picks a pass to the right wing, and Antonio Rago. Rago just checks his run, and looks uh, ahead of him to find support from Caseros. Caseros looking to pull a trick, make a move. He's lost possession. It's a throw-in for the Rowdies, and they look straight to Antoniuk, and he gives possession back to FC Edmonton. It's Rago with the ball, up to halfway, and Barthelemy, he's controlled it nicely. Now Arguez, Arguez just uh, missing that pass up towards Cox, and it's with Mulholland, who switches play intelligently to the left-hand side. Nice play from Mulholland, and the break for Shane Hill now, will switch play to the right-hand side. There's Mulholland again, just trying to get himself in on the action. A push pass to the right-hand corner flag, which Hatchie is content to let run into touch. A goal kick for FC Edmonton. We're approaching six minutes, and it's nil-nil so far. Tampa Bay with some nice possession there, being able to spray the ball around the park and, and trying to probe and find the opening there. But uh, Tampa doing well, does not, not give away the ball, not get frustrated, not just fire the ball up uh, aimlessly towards, towards the goal and hope for a bounce. Uh, Tampa's really trying to hold on to possession here. Kui playing center back today with a pass up the right wing. Rago gets in there and keeps the ball alive and FC Edmonton get it to Barthelemy. Barthelemy pushing it to the right wing. Porter's on side. Porter looking for a cross from that wing and He's managed to win a corner for FC Edmonton. Cox was lurking in the middle, and the defense choosing to 
concede that corner kick, which Caseros will now take for the Eddies. And that is one thing that Edmonton is going to be missing too with the two center backs being changed today with no Proctor, no Hamilton. They're the two that normally come up on these corners to, uh, to get up there and, and to get the head on the ball. Caseros from the corner. It's gone very deep to the edge of the area and it's controlled by Cooey in there. Gets to make a run at goal and wins another corner. Couldn't believe the space he had there for a moment, Chris Cooey. And the play seemed to stop, but it's another corner from this left-hand touch line. Yeah, Cooey was just unmarked there uh, at the far end of the box there, and he fell very kindly to his feet. This one's taken short by West. He gets it back from Barthelemy, right-footed cross to the far post. Kept possession well there. Arguez on the right-hand side. He's uh, got right in behind the back here. Looks for the cut back to Cox. Cox slips as he controls possession. Might drop for West, whose looping ball is just going to go over the top of the crossbar. But some uh, good hustle for the Eddies. It's still nil there. Yeah, and it seems that one team goes to one end, creates a chance. The other team goes to the other to create a chance. There's not a lot of losing possession in midfield. Not a lot of uh, knocking the ball around the midfield. They're being, they're going at each other, but they're doing a good job too of protecting the ball once they've got it and uh, getting it to the point where they can create chances. The referee's whistle is for an infringement against Brian Arguez from that goal kick, and he takes the free kick quickly and finds Hatchie. Hatchie's launched a long pass up the left wing, which Porter takes on the chest and finds Dominic Pong. Now West in field to Arguez again. Porter's in space just ahead of him on the halfway mark. Porter pushing play again to Pong on the left wing, and now West clipping this one over the top of the defense, looking for a run by Cox. And he's being watched well by the central defender. Rodriguez, and he's won himself yet another corner. This is a, a good, strong start for FC Everton. Yeah, I'm not sure this corner is going to be a throw here, but they're setting up like almost like it's going to be a long, th long throw. A pong is uh, going to be there. We haven't really seen too much of Dominic Pong's throw in, so. To throw in right down by the corner flag. He's found Cox. Cox to the edge of the penalty area. Not the best ball into the box. Campo will clear it with Shane Hill. That's going to be intercepted again by Hatchie, who looked for a play switch to the right-hand side, but there's no one there. That one's into touch. A throw-in for Andre Zarango for Tampa. And that's really a dimension that Edmonton doesn't have in its game, is, is someone who has an ability to do that long throw from the corner. We see so many other teams in NASL have a guy who can do that, and, and Edmonton has certainly been burned for goals this year on those long throws. I think of I think of San Antonio, I think of Atlanta, who love to do that play, uh, to, to use a long throw in that territory almost as if there was a corner. And uh, maybe that's something that Edmonton can address next season and have someone who has that dimension in their game. Still nil-nil, we're approaching the first 10 minutes of the match and the Eddies looking smart in those uh, bright white shirts they're wearing today with a black trim, Tampa Bay in green with yellow hoops on the sleeves and socks. It's with Cooey in the center of defense, getting another game back in there. He's dropped there a couple of times this season to fill in various times. Bartholomew poking it through, Porter with a shooting chance and it's deflected wide for a corner kick. That all came from the back with Cooey. Bartholomew, very direct, picked a run by Porter, who wasn't far away. Yeah, and Stuart Campbell does well to pick up Porter's run here, and, and really a good saving tackle. Porter with a good touch here to take the ball away from Campbell, but, uh, but Stuart Campbell sticks with him, gets the foot and gets a deflection. Caseros' corner, there's been a flurry of corners. This one again has gone up deep to the far post. Porter gets his head on it. Cox trying to win it back, it's Antonia who hacks it away from the danger zone and gets it into the Eddie's half. Rago winning it straight back though. Very good play by Antonio Rago and a super pass to the left wing to pick out a Pong. A Pong, edge of the penalty area, slides it into the box and Cox, Cox, touch let him down a little bit and it's cleared again by JP Rodriguez. Back into the center circle. Edmonton trying to win the 50-50 balls and challenging well today and winning it again. It's a free kick for Arguez. Takes it quickly, keeps things moving, finds a pong. A pong's giving it back to Shane Hill. And Hill chipping it over the top into the Eddie's penalty area. And it's with John Smith who restarts play. And now Arguez, a good play switch to the right wing. Rago is chasing that one, can't keep it in. And it's going to be a throw in for Tampa. The score nil nil. Noticing on Edmonton's attacks, we've seen Kyle Porter and Michael Cox be, be able to get themselves open in, in, the, in the area. And they're running off the ball so far in this match has been excellent. Something that 
is an often underestimated uh, chore that strikers have to do, is to make those dangerous runs off the ball and occupy defenders, create space, create seams. And uh, so far, there's been some good running by both of them off the ball, and they've been able to create some openings and some chances so far, simply because they're able to, to occupy defenders and, and get behind. Nil-nil approaching 12 minutes. A really good atmosphere in Clark Stadium today as the free kick goes into the Tampa penalty area. Shane Hill trying to tidy it up, and the Eddies have won the ball back, and it's a long-range shot by Caseros. But Atanella gets across to his left four and makes a comfortable stop. Still goalless. Not worth, it's, it's worth the chance there with the way the ball bounced for Caseros. See, maybe you can catch the, the, the goalkeeper napping, but Jeff Atanella uh, deals with that fairly easily. Kui back in his own penalty area this time, pumping the ball high in the sky. It's won by the Eddies as they flick it on towards Barthelemy. And now Arguez chipping a ball over the top down the right-hand side, and Porter's got the pace to get there. Porter gets around the outside to the goal line, puts in the cross, and there's the header by Caceres just past the post. Terrific effort by Porter, lovely cross in, and Caceres went for the far left hand upright and just dragged it wide. Uh, great run here by Porter, takes the ball away from the defender, Caceros gets inside his defender, and you're, the header just goes just a little bit wide there, just flashing off the forehead of Kenny Caceros, but Edmonton again, getting the numbers up and getting a good first pass that's getting behind the defense of Tampa. Tampa's playing a very high line right now, and they're running that danger of allowing Edmonton to run by them, and maybe this is something they're gonna have to think about because this high line, Edmonton seems to be getting behind it fairly regularly, and maybe Tampa's got to pull back a little bit because Edmonton's being able to play those balls through. Yeah, they've sprung the offside trap a couple of times now with deep balls over the top, and it's been a good start for Edmonton, but still no goals 13 minutes into the match, and Tampa in possession at this point, attacking the goal to our right, twisting and turning in the midfield as Amber's lead. But it's the Eddies with the ball again in the middle of the field. And a Pong, Hill tackled nicely by Bartholomew. And Bartholomew trying to feed this one through the middle and thread it through for Porter. But this time, the central defensive pairing, including Rodriguez for Tampa, doing enough to intercept that ball. Hill has done well to win the ball for Tampa now. And they're attacking down this left-hand side. Cooey called into action on the edge of the penalty area there. And in the end, it's Hatchy who makes the interception and plays a pass out to the left wing. Cox controls it and plays a ball in field. He's picked out Sarasay Barthelemy. And now Adam West on the left-hand side. All along the ground for Cox again. The ball adjudged to have gone into touch by the referee, a throw in down the right wing, which Antonia controls for Tampa Bay. Plays it back to the thrower, though, and it's gone out for a throw in for Edmonton. And it's going to be Adam West who will take the throw and we've seen him uh, have a game in midfield recently but back to left back today he finds a pong from the three now Hatchy moving to the left hand touchline and just drills this one forward along the deck Cox touching it to Bartholomew and now Porter Porter making a pass to the right hand side and Rago Rago back in towards Porter got a touch to it goalkeeper Atanella makes a terrific save still might be a chance for a second attempt but uh, Pong chips that ball to the edge of the six-yard line, and Atanella's back on his feet to make the save. Great ball through, and Kyle Porter does get a touch to that, and that's a very good save by Jeff Atanella there. Good reaction, he sees this play developing, and that's what, that's what really separates a, a good keeper from a great keeper, is the great keepers can read those plays quickly and get off the line, make themselves big, take away that shooting angle uh, as quickly as they can. And Jeff Atanella does very well to read that ball as it's threaded through, that uh, Porter's gonna get that ball very quickly. And the poor does get a touch, but Adnell is right there, right on top of the ball to, for an easier block, less of an angle for Kyle Porter. But Kyle Porter's been very dangerous today. He's been making all sorts of runs and, and really has been the best player on the pitch so far of the, of the 22 we've seen out there. And Tampa's got to do a much better job of, of being aware of him and marking him because he's finding tons of space there. 16 minutes have been played and it's nil-nil so far again the offside trap is sprung and Cox has got a one-on-one -on -one break in towards goal here is he pulled from behind he goes down the referee sees nothing wrong with that no penalty kick, kick given the home crowd doesn't like it but Cox is still down feels like he needs treatment and Antonella kicks the ball into touch and 
We've got a stoppage in play. Here we're going to look at it here. Again, the high line from Tampa has problems there. And he gets by Yamada, a Michael Cox, and there's LeBron Regres leaning into him and really have to go with the referee there. Looks like a shoulder to shoulder, and they just just uh, just fall there. It is a good non-call by the official. Uh, it's just good, good, good defense, get the shoulder in there. But Tampa is running the risk with this high line, and they're getting Edmonton players behind it. And I'm wondering if Ricky Hill has got to start thinking about that, pulling back a little bit, creating more of a cushion, because yes, you want to be aggressive. You want to push Edmonton back, but it's not working right now. Edmonton's getting balls behind that back line. And sooner or later, these close calls are going to turn into a breakaway or that Jeff Atanella may have to deal with because Edmonton is getting very close to springing players. Very close to scoring, but still no goals at the stadium. And here at the other end of the field, it's Tampa with a strike towards goal, deflected wide for a corner for them. Cox with the best chance there, a free run at goal, and just being uh, harried from behind was enough by Rodriguez, putting him under pressure, and that was some good defending by Tampa, not giving that one up and putting the pressure on Michael Cox. He played about 18 minutes and the corner on the right-hand side of the field there, taken by Mulholland from the left wing. And it goes to the near post. It's in very low and it's Rago on the edge of the area that makes the clearance and Cox can't keep it in play on the left-hand side. It's a throw in for Tampa. Owen comes in towards Shane Hill. Hill plays it back out to the right-hand side, and Campbell. Campbell got things moving down the touchline. Cross coming in from that right-hand side by Frimpong, but it's very well claimed by John Smith, who looks solid early on in the first 18 minutes, and it's goalless so far. He's going to kick this one again with a half volley out to the left wing. Cox is beaten in the air, but it'll drop for Pong, who wins it and finds Michael Cox again. Cox challenging for possession against Frimpong and loses out. And it's with Rodriguez now for Tampa. We get play moving up to that left-hand side of Antonio. Former Edmonton player. In the end, that ball going out for a throw-in. Just inside their own half for Tampa. Defending the goal to our left. And it's Shane Hill again in the middle of the field. And he plays it back into the defense. And they've dropped off a lot deeper now, Tampa. Defending on the edge of their own penalty area rather than closer to the halfway line. Bartholomew gives away a free kick there and Tampa take it quickly out to the right-hand side and Campbell. Campbell just passed halfway. Tampa trying to keep possession here. Campbell playing it back to the center of defense in Yamada. Left-hand side now. Rango bringing the ball forward to the edge of the box. Ambersley linking up play well, and it's Antonio now. For Tampa, they got a couple of men on him, but the referee feeling that that was one too many and a free kick given to Tampa. In a dangerous position for Edmonton here. Something to watch for, too, in that last uh, mix-up after uh, Keith Savage had uh, was fouled by Sarah Say Bartholomew. They were shoving each other and jawing each other quite, quite a while after that whistle, and they kept talking to each other. So just wondering if there's going to be something a little bit later in the game between the two of those players. They don't look like they're very happy with each other uh, out there on the pitch. Mulholland with the free kick from the left-hand side, 30 yards from goal, and that's a free header in the penalty area for Antonio. He doesn't miss them from that range, and it's 1-0 to Tampa Bay. And too often we see it this year with Edmonton, and one of the reasons that they're at the bottom of the table is they're defending on set pieces in their own penalty area, and, and, and honestly, that's that's just inexcusable defending there to leave uh, An Antonio that wide open. Let, look, there's no body around him. Uh, the, the Chris Cooley is a good three, four yards away. John Smiths can't come out and deal with that ball in time. And really, it's it's an easy goal for Dan Antonio. He's not going to, for a player as experienced as he is in, in, in second division soccer, as good as he is in the air, that, that's, that's easy. And uh, it's just basic stuff. Mulholland sends a free kick into the box. Antonio first touch in. And Edmonton had built some good momentum. And that momentum all goes for naught because they can't defend the set piece. And we've seen that too often this year. And it's a big reason when you look at where they are in the standings. And something they're going to have to address for next season. 
Yet he's trailing by one goal to nil, playing the ball up the left wing, looking for a run for Porter, but Atanella comes out at his feet and clears that ball all the way through to his opposite number, John Smith. The goal coming on 20 minutes, we've played 21, and the Eddies one behind as Arguez plays a pass to the left wing, and upon controlling it and finding West just behind him now. Hatchy bringing the ball forward before sliding it to the right and Cooey. And obviously for Antonio, that's got to feel pretty good, doing it to a team that uh, he played with last year. And uh, maybe mind you with Dan Antonio, there's a lot of uh, teams that he used to play for. Cox almost getting in behind the Tampa Bay defense again, but one last ditch challenge against him. Just undoes him by Rodriguez, who's uh, trying to stick closely to Michael Cox. It's a throw in for Edmonton. West is going to take it, left wing here. Just inside the Tampa half. Picks bounce Arguez and gets the ball back, but miscontrols it under pressure from Hill, and it's a throw in to Tampa Bay. See here, having to get off the deck there, because Edmonton had built some really good momentum, we're creating some decent chances, and uh, really uh, gives them a free kick, and it's just falling asleep in their own end in terms of their marking, and uh, paying paying the penalty you deserve to pay. When you mark like that, you know, you deserve to be picking the ball in the back of your own net. There's no excuse there. So the, uh, now we'll see if Edmonton can, as they did against Carolina, uh, recover from the defensive mistake and create some goals of their own. Bartholomew well, has possession for Edmonton. Not for long, it's taken away from him by Campbell, and now Mulholland takes a touch and does very well under pressure from a couple of players. Now he digs out a pass to the left wing, but Cooey makes an interception this time against his former teammate, Antonio, who punished Edmonton there. And that's why Tampa have the only goal of the match so far from Antonio. And it's 1-0 as they start another attack towards goal. And Cooey this time winning the ball back for FC Edmonton, and it's with a pong. A pong straight through the center circle, looking for that threaded ball through that high line of defense by Tampa Bay. Porter was in behind the back, but this time the pass was intercepted and deflected. And it's Tampa in possession on the left-hand side. Where Shane Hill waits for the pass. Frimpong getting a touch. Now they're playing it long over the top of the Eddie's defense, but Cooey heading it away. Frimpong wins it back and plays the ball out to the right wing, looking to find his teammate, but West timed the interception beautifully for FC Edmonton. West is coming towards halfway, finds Arguez. Now in the center circle, Caseros, who went close earlier in the game with a header for Edmonton, with Bartholomew. Bartholomew looking to go directly through the middle there and dispossessed by Yamada, who got down to make the tackle. Going back to the goal, Edmonton does have a central defender down in the reserves that everyone raves about. His name is Malin Roberts, and he's of the age that he can make that move up. And we'll see if they can get the paperwork done next year, if that's a player they're going to have an option for. Because everyone who's seen him defend, everyone who's watched this kid down in reserves say he's an absolute fearless player. And I mean, he has uh, not afraid to go up for anything. And this is a player who I think can maybe push for a job next year uh, with, with the way that Edmonton has needs that physical uh, dimension in their back four. And it's something that's been lacking this year. And they need more of that. And that might be a player that they might have in the homegrown ranks who can, can make a move next year. Chance for Moe Holland again to get a crossover from that left-hand side for Tampa. Just down by the corner flag, trying to make himself an opening here. Hill is there for him, makes a nice little pass back out to the wing, and it's won back by Arguez. And again, that ball over the top for Cox to chase down the right wing. Yamada staying very close to Cox this time, and picking out Rodriguez, and they play it forward to Hill. In the field again for Savage. Savage switching play to the right wing. It's Campbell. Campbell looking for the forward pass to the target man, Antonio, taken away from him by Hatchy, but it's with Mulholland again. Mulholland trying to go around Arguez, who beats him all ends up there and picks out Bartholomew. Bartholomew in possession here. He's got Caseros wide to the right. And Cox ahead of him, but it's Caseros. He's just held up play here. 
and waited for Arguez to arrive. Arguez with the speculative shot from very long range, and that just uh, fizzles out left of the goal and goes wide. Bartholomew had the ball there in the middle. He didn't look up to see that both Cox and Porter were making, again, were getting ready to make runs. You could see Cox and Porter stopping themselves. They were getting ready to go to the back line, ready to be free again behind the high Tampa Bay line. And Bartholomew didn't pick up either of their runs. And, uh, you know, that's the, that's the kind of thing Bartholomew played the short pass there. But he had an awesome opportunity to play that ball up to either Cox or Porter, each going down the right and left channels to, to get behind that defense again. Rago's got a battle on here in his right back position. Mulholland is trying to beat him to the ball, but Rago gets there first. It's right down by the corner flag, and he plays that very wisely. Let's Mulholland dive in to make the tackle. And it's a goal kick for Edmonton. They trail 1 0 after 27 minutes. See here, at Tampa Bay still. As we saw in that last attack, still defending very high. And obviously, while they have, 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 have given up some chances to Edmonton, they haven't been punished for it. So, uh, and they have got a goal going the other way. So uh, I still think there's more goals in this game the way both teams are playing. And we'll, we'll have to see how it pans out. But, but defensively right now, both teams seem to be quite disorganized. And uh, they have been giving up chances. So there'll probably be more for Jeff Atnella and John Smith to do in this match. Frampong has possession for Tampa, playing it forward for Antonio. It's taken away from him by Arguez. Arguez just in front of the back four here, twisting, turning, looking for a pass. He's got Hatchie right alongside him. Hatchie moves it onto his left side, veers out to the left wing, plays a forward ball to Porter. He's miscontrolled it, and it's back with Tampa, with Antonio, plays it into Shane Hill in the middle of the field, wide to the right with Campbell. Campbell takes a touch, decides to run at the defense. Campbell going all the way to the goal line here. He has support from Frimpong. Frimpong putting in the cross to the near post. That should be an easy clearance for Cooey. He's not got very much distance on it. Frimpong again. Campbell again, the home crowd trying to lift Edmonton here as Hatchy steals possession on the edge of his own penalty area. Finds Kenny Caceres. Caceres darts over the halfway mark and has Rago wide alongside him for support. Here's Antonio Rago. They play the ball into the middle of midfield and Dominic Opong. Edge of the area is Barthelemy. Tried to dink it through for Cox. They weren't on the same wavelength. And that ball is going to be easy for Atanella in the Tampa goal. Edmonton's still being able to get the ball deep, though. They're able to put some passes together and get some penetration. And those chances are going to come if they can keep getting threading those balls through that back line and get players to run onto them. I mean, Porter's had some some, some chances that we've seen in in this in this uh, match, and uh, and we see Michael Cox get behind as well. So there's there's lots of openings in this match. Edge of the Eddie's penalty area again for Mulholland. Cooey gets ahead to that ball, and Arguez tries to control it, brings it down for Barthelemy. Got Caseros outside into the right. Arguez in the middle to a pong right on the center spot. Now Arguez again chipping a pass to the left wing this time. West's got lots of space. Decides to slow down though and play it back in field for a pong. A pong now picking out Barthelemy. Barthelemy. Runs into Shane Hill, but Opong's continued his run. Right to the right and Caseros. Caseros has got Rago outside of him on the overlap. Rago's early cross goes to the far post, and it's going to be claimed easily by Antonella, who gets up to make the catch and rolls it underarm to set Tampa going again. Tampa leading 1-0 through Daniel Antonio on the half-hour mark. Frimpong, short little pass in towards Savage, and now... Shane Hill again keeps it ticking over. They get the ball to the left wing. Chance for Cooey to try and win the ball back on the right back position. He does that, but concedes the throw for Tampa. Out of that early pressure that the Eddies were able to put on Tampa has uh, not happened for a while. And since Tampa's goal, they look like they've grown in confidence. But here come Edmonton now. Cox to the edge of the penalty area. He's tackled very well by Campbell. He got down to make the sliding challenge. And it's going to be a throw in for the Eddies on this left hand touch line. Again, we'll see West with a short throw here. Gets the ball back and tries to get the cross in. It deflects off the back of Cox. And it's easy for Antonella. 
see here. Tampa's still pushing up very, very high. They're being very aggressive, and I, and I, and I understand the logic here why, why, they're, why they're doing so. I mean, they want to get the goals early, take Edmonton, which is the last place team, out of the game. Uh, they want to be able to wrap up three points as, as quickly as they can. And if they can get a two or three goal lead, lead it, they're thinking that this is good for us and, and we can sort of coast home. But uh, they are leaving openings. And, and you know, maybe you think when you're playing a team that has the lowest goal scored in the league, that which Edmonton does, that you're, you, you, you have a better option when you're playing high because maybe you won't get punished for it, maybe if you're playing a team that has more, uh, more scoring. But at the same time, Edmonton's scoring has picked up quite a bit in the last month. They are scoring goals fairly regularly, and they don't have those kind of slumps like we saw uh, in the midpoint of the season where they were going four or five matches without scoring. Brian Arguez just on the edge of his own penalty area on the left-hand side. He's got possession. He's moving forward with the ball and has played a lovely pass in behind the defence. Cox chasing the wards goal here. Porters to his right. He just wanted a bit too long, delayed the strike and allowed the defender come to come over Andre Zarango to make the sliding tackle, and it's a quarter kick. Again, though, uh, Cox gets a chance because Tampa Bay is playing that high line, and uh, it was really well done here. The ball slides through. Cox thinks he's gone, but Andre Zarango gets on his horse. And he, perfect tackle to, to disturb that shot. Cox ready to strike that with his left foot. But again, Tampa's got to be thinking. They're, Edmonton is getting players behind our line, and we're playing that dangerous game. We haven't got punished for it yet. West's corner goes deep to the far post. Antonio gets his head on it and drops for Caseros, who's passed through. Doesn't quite work, but it has got another corner kick for Edmonton. Quite a number of corners for the Eddies in this half. The goal they conceded was a set piece. They're going to try and strike back with one here. Down 1 0. Caseros' okay. corner. Again, it's gone very deep to the far post. It beats everybody, but Porter has the possession back on the left hand side. Porter tries to angle in across. That one's deflected as well. And Hill completes the clearance. The ball's back with West, who will play it back for Hatchy. Hatchy wide to the right hand side, and Antonio Rago just inside his own half, but makes a good break forward here, beats a couple, and gets brought down to win a free kick for the Eddies. And uh, the referee says that the ball's rolling. That free kick has got to be taken over again because that was moving. Edmonton wanted to take it quickly. And uh, we see the tackle. And uh, Edmonton will set up here. I uh, see Tampa Bay's backed off a little bit on this attack, offering a little more space in the midfield so they can, can cover in front of their own penalty area a little bit better than they have been. West from the left-hand side, just clips in across to the far post, headed away by Rango, and it's going to be a throw-in on the right-hand side for Antonio Rago, his team trailing 1-0. Rago finds Arguez from the throw, gets the ball back, but lost possession again. And it's with Tampa with the number 15, Mike Ambersley. Ambersley moves away to his left, where he's got Mulholland in support. Mulholland's got Antonio in the penalty area. Plays a short pass to Frimpong on the edge of the box. He's tackled by Arguez, but it's still Tampa in possession with Savage. Savage, a pass to the left wing. Frimpong unfairly tackled by Rago, and it's another free kick to Tampa. And it's almost the same position from where they scored a goal. Yeah, I have a feeling that maybe uh, Daniel Antoniak won't be uh, undetected in the penalty area this time as he was in the, the last free kick. But again, this is the this is the problem for Edmonton. These kind of uh, these kind of attempts uh, that we see uh, these set pieces that go into the penalty area. Some of this plagued them all year long. He plagued them earlier in the game to give Tampa, you know, really a gift of a goal. And we'll see almost on the exact same kind of play here how how Tampa fares here. Mulholland from the left wing, in comes that cross, it's flicked towards goal, and again, Tampa winning it. I think Yamada got his head on it, but just couldn't direct it, and that goes behind for a goal kick, desperately close again. Yeah, Yamada cuts in front, gets that first touch, and that's dangerous, it flashes across the front of goal, but again, Tampa allowed to get to that ball, to be the first two, and no one really challenging there. Edmonton is far too static, far too passive in their in their own area on defending those set pieces. And when you defend like that, you're going to be giving up a heck of a lot of goals. Hatchie's given away possession on the edge of the area, but Arguez wins it back from Hill. And it's with Caseros to the right wing and Rago. Rago, a forward pass that didn't really work out. Barthelemy had uh, changed his run, and the ball's with Tampa Bay. They lead it 1-0. 
Less than 10 minutes to half time. Edmonton storming out to a rousing start in this match. A series of corners and attacks and chances, but not able to take those chances when they were there. Tampa Bay sneaking a goal at the other end against the run of play. An unmarked header from Antonio. And that's the way it is at the moment. And they're attacking again here. Cooey doing some good work just inside his own penalty area to win the wall, ball back for FC Edmonton. The right hand side trying to find Caseros. But the ball passed but all the way back to Atanella from the halfway line for Tampa. He takes a touch and clears it right footed through the middle. Hatchy gets his head on it. West comes across to help. And it's with Rago again. Rago playing a pass into the middle and Arguez. Arguez looking for Caseros who's struggling a bit on that right hand side. Another throw in for Tampa. And, you know, you talk about all those attacks Edmonton had, and a lot of it was foiled by some wonderful last-ditch tackling from Tampa. We saw Arango, Rodriguez, uh, Stuart Campbell all come in with late challenges and tackle clean, and that's the important thing. And in, in some cases, you'd see those players get behind, and you might get penalties and red cards, but all those players showed some outstanding technique in getting back and disturbing those attacks by Edmonton. Frimpong on the right-hand side for Tampa. He's gone around west and looks to play a 1-2. He's right by the goal line now. Cross to the near post, charged down by Hatchy. Another corner, this time for Tampa Bay. And this, again, is dangerous. The, the set pieces so far for Tampa have been very effective, and they've been the first two of these balls. So right now, we'll see uh, Tampa launch another ball in there, and we're sure that uh, that this is something Edmonton's got to be wary of, is that uh, they're, 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 they're not winning these battles and, and letting Tampa get fairly easy uh, touches on the ball off these set pieces. Corner kick from the right-hand side. It's Mulholland who's placed the ball. And it goes again, Yamada winning a header, and again, FC Edmonton clearing it and living again, but a uh, very dangerous situation in there, and Yamada winning two successive headers from a free kick and a corner, and it's a throw in from the opposite side now of the field for Tampa. Frimpon making a run just inside the penalty area there. So is Antonio. The referee's got to call for them to uh, get this going, and in fact it is. It's a yellow card, and that took ages. I mean, there's a limit to how long you can wait for someone to take a throw in. And I think the straw that broke the camel's back was that, you know, they switched throw-ins, they switched takers there about a minute after that was awarded. They were running around, running around, then they decide, oh, we're going to have someone else take the throw. And I think the referee said, enough's enough. you got you got to get that back in play. And uh, really a silly, silly yellow card to pick up. Because those are the ones that when you get sent off, you're always thinking about. It's not the, the that second yellow card, which might be a tackle that's a bit late. It's the first one where you might get back, and if that player gets sent off, he'll be thinking, wow, I got one for delaying a throw-in. And that's just, you know, silly stuff that can cost your team down the road. Well, Holland in possession again here. He's uh, chipping up a pass to the left-hand side from the middle of the field, but that one's run into touch for a goal kick to the Eddies. About five minutes to half time. We're live streaming the game on cbc.ca slash Edmonton slash soccer. We're live on Shaw Television today. And live on the team, 1260. Gareth Hampshire alongside Steve Sandor. Yeah, and I believe that's Frimpong who got the yellow card for the delay because he was the, the player that picked up the throw and afterwards uh, the one who came in late to take the throw and uh, again just a silly card to have on the on the ledger and you have to be careful now all because of a throw in. Cox controlling the ball on his chest and finds Dominic Apong who plays it wide to the right hand side. Caseros has got possession. Written one challenge but been forced to play the ball back into the central defensive zone where Cooey wins it and finds a pong and now Caseros again Kenny Caseros trying to go in between two players with Frimpong winning it back and playing a pass up the left wing Antonio again menacing in the middle chance of a cross from the left hand side Tampa in the end checking back deciding to keep possession it's with Frimpong again on that left flank now Shane Hill in the middle of the field he'll just play an easy pass to the left wing Mulholland on the edge of the penalty area, Frimpong making the break here. Now Savage, Hill's got possession. He's going to play another pass to the left wing where Mulholland is in possession. It's good to possession stuff this from Tampa, but Hill really not troubled as he dances past Dominic Apong there and tries the long-range shot. 
going to be easy for Smits. Four minutes to the break as Smits overarm throws it out to the left wing. Here's West. West charges past his marker. West has got midway inside Tampa territory here and then decides to play a pass back to Arguez, who's going to switch it all the way to the right flank. Rago takes a touch and then chases onto it. Outside of him is Barthelemy. Here is Cerise Barthelemy. He's uh, running sideways. He's got support from Arguez. West again on the left-hand side. Possible chance for an early cross here, but looks backwards to Apong. Dominic Apong into the middle and Arguez. Getting the ball back from Cui. Arguez in the center circle. Chips a pass over the left and side for Bartholomew. Bartholomew's cross to the far post, headed away by Yamada, one back by Apong, leaves it for Arguez. Dominic Apong interchanging with Arguez and then trying to play a pass to the right wing then Rago. Rago gets a touch on it, but Mulholland beats him to the ball. And Mulholland's first time clearance is picked up by Smith, who comes out of his goal to kick that one clear. It's one back by Tampa and they're towards the edge of the penalty area here. There's the strike and there's the second goal and it just looks a little bit too easy. 2-0 for Tampa Bay. It's Ambersley this time who's found the target and the Eddies trailing by two goals to nil. And really this is the dream start for Tampa. I know we talked about some of the chance, chances they've given up here but but Am Ambersley just given way too much space. They're inviting him to shoot. Kevin Hatchie has got to come out and challenge that shot. Kevin Hatchie stands there, lets him have that space, and, and Hatchie's got to come out and challenge that shot. He's got to say, okay, make, take a touch, try to get around me. But instead, he, he, he peels off, stays, gives him five yards and says, go ahead, ha have a go. And Mike Ambersley's an experienced goal scorer in this league, and, and it's pick your poison. You're, you're inviting him to, to, to have a strike, and it's, it's all too easy. Tampa isn't earning the goals as so much they're taking the gifts that Edmonton is presenting to them. It's like Christmas out there with the way the defenders are, are, are allowing them the space and the time to take those chances. And that's just something that's, that, that's got to be there. The intensity is not there for Edmonton today on the defensive side. They've been far too passive and they've just, they look like a team that's, that's playing out the string right now. They're, they're, uh, they're allowing way too much space. Shane Hill making a break to the left-hand side, finding Ambersley again, who's in all sorts of space. They've got Frimpong at the far post, as well as Antonia. They're playing it back to the left-back. In comes the cross now. Frimpong's up there, might drop for Antonia. He has to check his run and win back the ball here on the right wing. Tampa playing passes around virtually unchallenged. Here's Campbell. Campbell's going to go round west here, gets to the corner flag and wins himself a throw in. Almost to half time here. 2 0 to Tampa. And it's Tampa doing the attacking at the moment. Throw towards the penalty area. Antonio turning his man. Left foot strike that Hatchie just managed to charge down. But Antonio causing all kinds of problems in there. In the end, Cooey's the man who just blasts it clear. And Yamada winning the ball back for Tampa Bay. You know, we talked top of the game what's going to be like to see Edmonton without their two main central defenders and we're seeing today it's not very good the, uh, the, the, the they've been slow to react to some of the attacks by Tampa and just too much space in front of the penalty area in front of their own goal and, and really leaving John Smith's hung out to dry in the, in the Edmonton goal yellow card for Sarah say Bartholomew for a late challenge on Campbell he's waiting for a ball to come onto the field before he can get going here. Wants to throw it on now by one of the ball boys, and the free kick is just inside the Eddie's half. Campbell takes it short, finds Savage, gets the ball back. Campbell, right hand side, he's going to try his luck by going to the goal line, plays it in field for Ambersley. Now Mulholland, good passing by Tampa Bay to Frimpong on the edge of the penalty area. Eventually, Arguez winning the ball back, and it's a chance for Bartholomew to chase away down this left hand side. Cox is through the middle, Cox veers to the left, makes a good break there. Here's Michael Cox, one-on-one. -on -one. Cox into the edge of the penalty area. Still a chance for Porter in there for a scrambled opportunity, but Tampa doing enough to get the ball clear in the end, just keeping their nerve. And that is half-time, and in truth, a disappointing first 45 minutes for the Eddies. Two very poor goals they've conceded.
and they trail 2-0 at halftime. Yeah, as I just mentioned, these were as much gifts to Tam the Tampa Bay Rowdies as they were uh, goals that the, the Rowdies earned. Ed Danny Antoniuk will, will probably tell you that he ha won't have an easier time with a header as he's absolutely unmarked for the first goal. And, and the second, Mike Ambersley's invited to shoot. Everyone backs off of him, backs off of him, and he's, he's a good goal scorer. And, and he takes that chance, takes that opportunity. And, and, and really, you, I don't see the aggression defensively from Edmonton. They're not getting, they're not being passionate. They're not, they're not playing for that crest right now. They're not, they're not showing what they need to show to this coach if they, they want to keep their jobs for next year. This is a team that looks like they really are just trying to get through 90 minutes and, and, and be done with it and get through next week's game. Because right now, we're not seeing that kind of passion that we need to see from the FC Edmonton players. Goals from Daniel Antoniuk on 20 minutes, the former Eddie striker. And Mike Ambersley on 42 minutes just before half time. Those are the only two goals in this match. And that's the way it is at half time. Stay with us for our half time show brought to you by Londonderry Mall today. And we will be going pitch side to hear from both coaches at half time. Ricky Hill just having a conversation with his uh, son at the moment, who's looked pretty uh, confident in the middle of the park and not been troubled too much and he'll feel pretty good after the first 45 minutes yeah, and uh, he'll be pr pretty happy that I'm sure this is what he wanted was to see uh, Tampa jump off to an early lead take advantage get ahead be able to uh, to, 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 to take the, the last place team in this league which is Edmonton down early so that you, you, you take them out of the game you, you, you feel good you, you you get moving and you, and you get towards those three points you got to earn if you're Tampa to try to get that that buy into the the, the playoffs and, and get into that second round right away let's go pitch side and talk to Ricky Hill Steve okay coach uh, Hi. the t was was the game plan today to, to get on top of Edmonton early to try to get those early goals take them out of the game absolutely I think that's our game plan wherever game we start and we try to take the game to teams um, and hopefully managed to score during that time. I wasn't very happy with the way we started. I thought Edmonton were first class in the first 20 minutes and we were fortunate to still be level before we scored our first goal from the free kick. Um, I made a slight adjustment after about 20 minutes in regards to instead of playing three up front, we decided to go to basic 4-4-2 and try to win more of the midfield areas where Edmonton were, were threading balls through and causing us bits of problems early on. And it seemed that Edmonton, that first 20 minutes you were talking about, were able to get balls and diagonal runs behind your back line. Was that part of the adjustment? Were you thinking that they're just getting behind us too easily? Without a doubt. Um, you know, they, certain players were floating behind our midfield one or two at the time, and uh, we, we found it difficult to engage with anyone. And then our defenders, they weren't sure who to pick up because Everton were moving the ball well, and they had different type of runners coming from angles or the strikers were making decent runs as well. And I just felt to give us a basic shape of a 4-4-2, it would be easier for us to manage, for us to communicate with each other, and for us to be in touch with each other to support, to support the ball. Um, we were fortunate to get the goal. We were grateful to get the goal. And from then, I think we, we relaxed a little bit. Our confidence grew. And um, Edmonton have to push forward to try and get some goals. And hopefully, we can capitalize on the, those opportunities. All right. Thanks a lot, coach. Thank you very much. Ricky Hill joining us from pitch side, the coach of the Tampa Bay Rowdies, uh, making the point that the Eddies had worried him in the first 20 minutes there with lots of runs in behind the Tampa defense before his team scored. So he wasn't pleased with the first 20 minutes, but pleased uh, following that with the way his team uh, got the two goals. Let's go pitch side now and talk to the Eddie's coach, Harry Sinkgrav. And thanks for your time, Harry. Even Ricky Hill mentioned there that, that uh, the start of the game had worried him. You'd, uh, you'd got in behind the Tampa defense so many times. How do you explain the, the two goals you then conceded? Well, if, if you look at the, the, the first half, it's a little bit uh, world upside down, uh, in my opinion. I think we had five, five uh, good chances and uh, no goals. They had uh, two chances, well, and, and, and the last is not even a chance, in my opinion. And they score. So the first goal, yeah, we didn't mark uh, uh, Antoniuk. Uh, the second goal in the counter-attack, uh, we were too much guys were up. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and, and if you look to the, to the game and how we play, by moments we play very well. Um, uh, just what I say, we had, uh, every time when we play balls behind the defense, it's going to be dangerous. And the last uh, 15, 20 minutes of the game, of the first half, we didn't do it anymore. So we, we, we tried to find the closest player and, and then they can press. So, uh, 
if every time if you play the ball over the top, behind the defense, it's going to be dangerous. Just tell us then about some of the uh, messages you'll be giving to your players at halftime to try to come back from this, Harry. Well, of course, what I just mentioned, uh, uh, every set piece uh, mark very good in defense and uh, make sure that you don't, uh, that you don't uh, lose the balance in midfield. And of course, when we have possession, play balls in behind because th that's our strength and, uh, and yeah, then we will get more chances. Thank you, Harry. All right. Harry Sink, Robin, joining us from pitch side, pleased with the way his team played. Uh, but not pleased with the way they've defended those set pieces. Uh, poor defense conceding two goals means that at halftime the score is the Eddies nil, Tampa Bay Rowdies two. For over 25 years, Rohit Communities has been building homes in Edmonton and area, offering a variety of home styles, including duplexes, townhomes, bungalows, apartment condos, and single-family homes. Rohit Communities can be found in 12 locations. More information is available at rohitcommunities.com. Earth Coffee, part of the Earth Group of Companies, a proud sponsor of FC Edmonton. Half time at Clark Stadium, FC Edmonton nil, the Tampa Bay Rowdies two. The home fans looking for a lift in this. Second half will be coming up shortly. Harry Sinkgraven giving that team talk to the players at halftime right now. The scoring summary at halftime then. Goals from Antonio and Ambersley the difference. The Rowdies with a 2-0 win. 2-0 lead at halftime. Let's take a look at those highlights at halftime. And here's uh, the unmarked Dan Antonio. Uh, just allowed a free header here on a set piece. He's the biggest player. He's the most uh, the most likely to be get his head on the ball, and he's the one that's absolutely unmarked. Uh, just you deserve to give up a goal when you leave you leave a player like that, leave him isolated. And then we have Mike Ambersley, who's uh, just allowed all sorts of space. Uh, you see Kevin Hatch is just standing passively, doesn't attack the ball, doesn't attack the man, just stands and lets it happen. And sure enough, he dumps the ball into the cor corner of the goal. John Smith has no chance on that shot. You know, you know, when soccer players aren't pressured, when they're not hairy, that skill shines through. And all of a sudden, those shots that might go towards the middle of the goal or might go high end up picking corners because these guys are pretty good. And when, they, when they're given time and space, all of a sudden, they're allowed to pick, to pick those, those spots. And we got some special guests uh, playing on the pitch at halftime at FC Edmonton today. Uh, some of the kids from Soccerability. And we're going to join uh, John Club at pitch side. John's a coach with the Alberta Soccer Association. Thanks for joining us, John. Tell us a little bit about uh, what Soccerability is. Yeah, Soccerability is a program I'm trying to develop across Alberta on behalf of Alberta uh, Soccer Association. It's a pan disability program, so we've taken players with all sorts of uh, disabilities and we're putting them into one program. So we've got a four year old boy with uh, visual impairment and adults as well and we're just trying to encourage more players with disabilities out to play soccer with us in Edmonton and Calgary 
um, the more players we get, the more chances we get for competitive opportunities. So to develop a programme um, and a player pathway for disabled soccer players. Tell us in the past, John, when you've been involved with this, uh, what difference it's able to make when you, when you have so many players that you're able to pull together like that. Well, again, it's, if, if there was enough players, we could stick with impairments. The more players we get, the more competition they get, the more chances they've got to develop in their, their skills, uh, friendships and stuff like that. So we're just trying to pull as many players together as possible. And what's it like for the kids to be on the pitch at halftime here today? Absolutely fantastic. They've been buzzing. We've, we've come up early this morning from Calgary, some of them. So we left at 7 this morning and uh, we've had a game this morning and they've had a great time and obviously they're doing the penalties now. People that are, that are watching, John, that, that have interest, what, uh, what can they do? We really want to get hold of more players with disabilities um, and come out and play soccer with us. So contact me at Alberta Soccer Association. Um, most of us have been impacted. We know someone with a disability. And there are opportunities now for us to develop it. Um, I keep throwing a number out back home in England. The FA pump in £6 million a year for disability soccer alone. We're starting at grassroots, and can we get that far? We never know, but if we don't try, we'll never find out. And we've just seen in, in the London Olympics such an amazing response to the Paralympics, John. When you get kids involved in sport that have disabilities, tell us about the difference you feel that it can make in their lives. There's no, I, I've got it on the shirt, there's no boundaries. They come out and they have no inhibitions about what they can do. Some children um, within the so-called mainstream will say, I can't do that move. These kids try it, they do it, and the smile is, is worth a million dollars. Fantastic, John. Enjoy your day today. Thanks very much. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. That's John Club telling us about soccerability, and the kids are out there on the pitch challenging the mascot for FC Edmonton today. It's half time at Clark Stadium. 2 0 down the Eddies Trail. The second half is coming up next. Part of the Earth Group of Companies, a proud sponsor of FC Edmonton. For over 25 years, Rohit Communities has been building homes in Edmonton and area, offering a variety of home styles, including duplexes, townhomes, bungalows, apartment condos, and single family homes. Rohit Communities can be found in 12 locations. More information is available at rohitcommunities.com. Well, the home crowd hoping for better in the second 45 minutes at Clark Stadium. Just down there enjoying some of the food trucks that are a bit of a feature at 
Clark Stadium this season for FC Edmonton, hoping their team will come out and fight their way back into this game. Two real softies they gave up in that first half and trailed 2-0 to the Tampa Bay Rowdies at halftime. The players just about now coming out of the tunnel for the second half. Yeah, and I think Harry Sinker having said the half is they had two chances and one wasn't even really a chance. And I'm talking about, I was talking about the Mike Ambersley one where they just everyone just backs in and turned what should have been no chance into a to a goal. And, uh, you know, we can talk about Edmonton getting those chances early and, and Ricky Hill making that subtle adjustment of going to a 4-4-2 to take away some of that midfield space that Edmonton was finding. But uh, when you're defending is... is it's not about X's and O's anymore. When your defending is that lax, when players aren't picking up their assignment, it really doesn't matter about formations anymore. It doesn't matter about about your tactical outlook. All that matters is, is your players' willpower, their passion. Do they want that play? And in, in both of those cases where we saw Edmonton miss the marking on the corner kick goal, where we saw Edmonton all backing off of Mike Ambersley and allowing him that shot, it's, it's not about X's and O's. It's not about the coach sending players out and putting out the wrong formation. It's all about players wanting to get stuck in, getting the willpower to get on their mark and to make those defensive plays. This one, the uh, penultimate home game for FC Edmonton. The last home game of the season coming up next Sunday is against Fort Lauderdale. If you can't make that game, join us uh, at cbc.ca. We'll be streaming the game live, the Team 1260, and live on Shore TV. Next Sunday, the December the, September the 23rd, against the Fort Lauderdale Strikers, 2 p.m. kickoff. And you can always follow the Eddies online as well. Facebook, facebook.com slash... FC Edmonton and on Twitter at FC Edmonton. And uh, just got confirmation that it was Ambersley who gave up the throw in. When we, we said that was Frimpong who got the yellow, it looked like it was Frimpong. It was actually Ambersley who got the yellow for giving up the throw in. Uh, and that's when the official said that's enough uh, in that case. So it's Ambersley's the one who's carrying the yellow uh, and it's not Frimpong. When we saw the two switch off the throw and they, they got the yellow for delaying the game, that was the way the official saw it. He saw it as Ambersley by giving up the throw in after he'd taken almost a minute to, to get a throw-in set up and then giving the ball up to Frimpong. He was the one that who got the yellow, not Frimpong for taking the ball. We're back underway in the second half. FC Edmonton kicking us off and attacking the goal to our right. The Eddies all in white today. Tampa Bay in their traditional colors, green with the yellow hoops on the sleeves and the socks. The Eddies have made a substitution to start the second half. Elvia Zhigalai has come on to replace Serase Bartholomew, who ended the first half with a yellow card, and coach Harry Sinkgraven perhaps looking to the future here and giving Zhigalai another run out. We saw him get a chance in midweek two. Well, he's got 45 minutes to make his mark today. Yeah, and it's a significantly longer uh, period of time than we've seen Zhigalai get in, in earlier games. He's usually been brought in as a sub in the 85th or in the 80th. You know, 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there. Don't really tell us a lot about a player. Now we'll see him with 45 minutes. A big, strong striker who tore up Canadian University soccer last year with uh, St. Mary's University. And we'll, uh, we got, he got him to the university final last year, scored two goals against the University of Alberta in the semi. And uh, a player that they're really big on because of, of how good he looked and how he dominated Canadian University last year. Dominic Pong making a nice 1-2 play there with Jigalai and then trying to carve out a pass to the right wing to pick out Porter, but Tampa clear it. Look to find Ambersley, who can't keep that ball in on the left-hand touchline. So he was credited with the yellow card, but got a goal as well. One of two for Tampa Bay, who still lead by two goals to nil. Early stages of the second half. Beautiful fall day, September day in Edmonton today, as West plays a cross-field ball from the left wing that'll run all the way through for Jeff Attenella. Made himself look big a couple of times in that first half, though some significant saves for Atanella. Kicks the ball out of his hands here, and it goes midway inside the Eddie's half, and West cushions a header down for Zhigalai. Zhigalai trying to link play back into the midfield and wins an early free kick for FC Edmonton. Yeah, we'll see how Edmonton recovers there from that half, and I know that they'll feel good about that first 20-25 minutes. They were able to sneak some balls behind Tampa Bay's line, but Tampa Bay with some good last-ditch tackling it didn't allow any of those chances to really uh, become too too threatening, and then uh, to really uh, give up the kind of goals that they did. It's, it's something we'll see how their morale holds up in the second half of Edmonton uh, with now a match and a half left on their season. 
Jigalai right hand side trying to work uh, the ball into the corner. He's beaten his man though nicely and charges towards the area. Just couldn't get the cross away. And Mulholland clears up the left hand side. Ambersley is beaten to the ball by Cooey who switches play to the left hand side. And Adam West again. West has got Arguez just inside of him. Arguez takes possession and veers out to that left hand side where he's got West now overlapping. Adam West puts a cross into the near post. Jigalai beaten by Yamada in the air. That ball drops in the midfield for Porter to win back. And now Cox. Cox just poking it all the way back to the defense. And Hatchy. Hatchy wide to the right and Rago. It was a tough ball for him to control, but he's done it well. And Shimmy's passed too. Great break by Rago. Good pass in towards Cox. Cox's right footed shot goes over the angle. Wonderful play by Rago. A nice spark from him. Side foot packs to Cox who probably would expect to hit the target from inside the area, but the chance is gone. Rago turns, turns the defenders inside out there uh, with, with that spin move, gets, gets behind Mulholland there, and he squares it nicely for Cox, who just is harried enough to, 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 to send that shot uh, to bother, uh, he's bothered enough there that he just can't get maybe enough time on that shot as he'd like. But Antonio Rago is so effective when he's going forward for Edmonton, when he's able to get up from that right back position and make runs deep into the opposition territory, and he can push back uh, uh, on the left side of the opposition. And Rago again shows why he can be such a valuable part of this team by simply moving up and making the right move. And he's, he's he knows when to stay on the ball and when he's confident on the ball that he can can beat a player and he doesn't doesn't panic with it there. And it was a wonderful play. Wonderful decision making there by Antonio Rago. Caseros on the right hand side on the end of a good 50 yard pass from Hatchie from the back, but his cross is not a good one. It's away by Tampa to the halfway line where Ambersley's buzzing around, but tackled by West. And Smith controls the ball nicely for Hatchie. Chris Cooey chips one up the right hand channel, headed away by Arango, and it's with Luke Mulholland again. Holland just getting his foot on the ball and picking out Yamada behind him. His long clearance is headed away by Hatchy in the center half position again today. Right hand side for Campbell. He's got Ambersley outside of him. Ambersley holding it up for Campbell, who's continued his run. Ambersley again. There's lots of support there from Savage. Shane Hill. Easy pass back out to the right hand side. Hill now uh, playing it forward for Frimpong. Frimpong looking to take on West, but then holds it up nicely for a cross from the fullback to the far post. Antonio nodding it down. Real danger in there. It's another goal for Tampa Bay. Luke Mulholland picking up the Antonio knockdown, blasting it in from close range, point blank range, and it's 3 0. And the route is on. And, and, and Dan Antoniuk is given again acres of space. Here, I think it's Kenny Caseros who, who loses him here on the far post. He's got space to make that quick knockdown, and then no one picks up in the middle. But really, it all starts with no one picking up their men off that cross. And again, some very, very lax, disorganized uh, defending by, by Edmonton. And, and really a team that, that today, unfortunately, is not bringing the, the passion that it needs needs to bring when they're talking about playing out these games and playing for pride, playing for your jersey, playing for your jobs next season. We're not seeing that right now from this Edmonton team. We're seeing an Edmonton team that is allowing Tampa Bay to dictate these plays. And really, you can talk about how Edmonton dominated the first 20 minutes. They're, they're so disorganized in their own end. They're, they're going to bleed goals. This might not be over unless, uh, unless something really changes in the back. We're live on Shore TV, live on the Team 1260 and streaming live on cbc.ca and the home team 3-0 down as Mulholland starts her another attack on the left-hand side across to the far post with Smits gets across and makes the claim off this time. Arguez on the left flank, midway inside his own half and now West clipping it forward long into touch. Another throw in for Tampa Bay. And the atmosphere all a little bit flat for the home fans at the moment yeah and it's it, it, it really is uh taking any sort of life out of these fans we heard in the first half the drums we heard the the chanting and the fans have, have been great and wonderful in supporting this club through what has been a difficult season for them and uh really today edmonton is uh is, is getting beaten very badly in their own end of, of the pitch and uh, just giving up chances way too easily. And while we tell you in terms of number of attacks, Edmonton is, is outnumbering Tampa. In terms of 
in terms of attacks that have left the goalkeeper helpless. Uh, Tampa Bay's badly outnumbered Edmonton. Cooey surrendered possession just uh, inside his own half. Mulholland almost with a free pass through to Ambersley, but it was intercepted by Arguez, who chips a ball out to the left-hand side. West just passed halfway for FC Edmonton. West, a little touch in field. The Pong's got possession now. And now Brian Arguez again, middle of the park, looking for some movement ahead of him. Arguez just pokes a pass out to the left-hand side, but that's going to be intercepted by Campbell, whose team are 3-0 up against the Eddies at Clark Stadium. Just eight minutes into the second half, and that third goal could be a killer in this one. Frimpong, right-hand side, just uh, gets the better of West, who then uh, takes him down, and it's a free kick to Tampa Bay. And we'll see this free kick goes back into the box here, where uh, Antonio can be dangerous again and, 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 uh, and get open. Now they, it looks like they're going to roll this in. Shane Hill, easy pass to Savage. Now wide to the left-hand side and Mulholland. Good movement from Tampa Bay. Ambersley's got free on the left-hand side here. He's got an overlapping run too. He's uh, got lots of time as well. In the end, they play it back. Shigalai, though, got a bit of effort to uh, sneak that one back for FC Edmonton. Shigalai sprinting away down the left-hand side. He's got Cox on the far post. It's a very deep cross. It's too long and too far for Cox. And that will go out for a goal kick to Tampa Bay. And, 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 and you know, it's, it's, it's not just about playing for the pride of the jersey, but you have to think there are people watching in San Antonio and Puerto Rico today who, who want to see Tampa Bay not get three points today for where the standing they are in the playoff race. And what they're seeing is Tampa Bay being allowed some very easy goals. And it's got to be frustrating for, for those, those fans knowing that maybe they could have, could, have, uh, could have had Edmonton give them a little bit of help by taking some points away from Tampa Bay today. And uh, what, they've, what they've seen is Tampa, their attacks are, are bearing fruit uh, pretty often here at Edmonton today. Adam West on the left-hand side, linking up with Arguez. West running Arguez again there. He's uh, out on that touch line. Good footwork to get the pass away to Caseros. And a Pong helps it onto the right wing. Rago, Rago just to the edge of the area, running at the defenders again. Tries to go around the outside. Referee didn't think it was a penalty. Waves him back up. Rago just uh, throws his hands onto the ground in front of him. He felt like uh, there should have been a whistle there. It's with Ambersley now, still deep inside his own half. I'm not sure there was much in that for a penalty. Yeah, and Antonio's got to get up a little quicker there, too. I mean, he, he's a defender. He's got to get back to his position. Tampa Bay's moving forward, and uh, it, it's not really helping his team by, by slamming his hand into the ground a couple of times and, uh, and, and, and uh, you know, trying, to, try, trying to, to dress it up for the referee there. The, the play's gone on. Tampa Bay's moving the ball forward. Get up and hustle back to your position. You've you got to help out your team there. You're not helping them by, uh, by remonstrating toward the official. 3-0 the lead for Tampa Bay, and they have a free kick, which Hill takes quickly and finds Ambersley in space on the left wing. Ambersley has got Frimpong just inside of him. Frimpong to the edge of the box. Antonio, Ambersley continued his run, but Hatchy made a very good tackle. Still with Antonio. Now Hill joining the attack. Left-footed ball to the far post. He almost picked out a beautiful cross to Ambersley, but Smith was equal to it with a terrific catch at that far post and tried to get things going quickly again, but Tampa winning the ball back. Rago in a real battle with Frimpong, and this time he does get a free kick just inside his own half. Smith bails out Adam West there. Adam West had lost Ambersley in the box, and Ambersley was going in alone at the far post for a header, and Smith recognized at the last second, got his fingertips to that cross before Ambersley would have nodded it into an open goal. Uh, the, again, uh, another player in the penalty area open for a header. The marking has been, has been very poor from Edmonton today. And that time, John Smith bails himself out a little bit by, by being, being able to recognize that. But uh, uh, the, the way Edmonton is marking in the back, they're asking for more goals to be scored against them. Cooey's free kick up to the edge of the box, and Yamada beating Cox in the air with Hill, who looks uh, pretty smooth out there. He's uh, probably not missed a pass all afternoon, Shane Hill, for Tampa Bay. He's just orchestrated things and had people running around him. And it uh, looks like he's hardly broken sweat. He's played a 1-2 there. And now chips the ball to the left-hand side. He's got it back. And that's a through ball. He's trying to thread it in for Frimpong. 
the flag was up this time. The Eddie's defense just uh, having that offside decision. I think Rago would have been able to do enough anyway, but it's offside. And I believe that Daniel Antonio, the last time at, uh, Tampa was here, scored the winning goal against uh, Edmonton. So he's really uh, had a heck of a time giving his uh, former employers uh, a miserable year this year. And, uh, you know, the, the best revenge for a player is playing well, and, and, and he's certainly done that in the games against Edmonton this year. Penalized there for a foul against Rago. Tries to snap at Arguez's boots from behind as well, but Arguez coming away with possession. And now threading a ball straight through the middle. Cox won't get there. It'll run all the way through for Atena. And about a half hour left as Antonella rolls that ball out underarm to the right hand side of the field. Tampa Bay feeling in complete control at this moment. Yamada bringing the ball out from the back. But Cox takes it away from him. Cox charges towards goal here. Cox with the left footed cross shot effort is deflected and cleared by Tampa. Savage in the edge of his own penalty area bringing the ball away. Holland on the right-hand side. It's a long ball towards Antonio. He might just get in behind Cooey there, but Smith's coming out of his goal to win it back. He's uh, pedaling back into his goal. And sent still at the attack here, though, and the strike in the end by Ambersley. He gets down to make the save and catches it well and rolls it out to the right-hand side. And Kenny Caseros. Caseros, a forward pass to Porter. Porter looking in field and finding Arguez, takes a touch with his left foot. Right foot pass to a pong. A pong forward for Cox. Better movement from Edmonton here. Cox has passed to the right hand side, though, is overhit. Caseros won't get there. And that's a throw in for Tampa. That Michael Cox's last contribution. It looks like uh, Paul Craig is going to be coming in for him very, very soon. Uh, Perry St. Graham giving Paul Craig's instructions, maybe the next whistle. We'll see that change being made. Ambersley chasing the ball down the left-hand touchline. He won't get to it. It's a throw-in for FC Edmonton. But we saw in uh, Tampa's last attack there, too, where John Smith forced to do a good save. Yes, he did give the ball away, scrambling to try to uh, to pick up for the defense there. But again, Tampa had three men in the area. T Edmonton only had two defenders. And John Smith is forced to make a very good save on Ambersley because Ambersley was left wide open in the, in the penalty area. It's uh, it's uh, it's a little bit hard to believe how how poor Edmonton's marking and picking up of plays have been uh, in the second half and through the first half as well. But if anything, the, their level of play has gone down, not not up, as as the second half has progressed. Referee trying to get control of the situation here. It's a free kick for FC Edmonton, but a substitution will happen, as Steve uh, had predicted, and Cox has played his last action of the match. And in comes Paul Craig in a new look formation up front. He's going to settle in there alongside Jigalai as Rago plays the ball back to Cooey. Cooey in possession, and now Hatchy. Hatchy passing it back to Smith, who will clear this right-footed up the right-hand side of the field. Rago again winning possession. The flag is up for a FC Edmonton ball. And Frimpong getting a bit of a lecture here from the referee. Those two have been in a bit of a tussle this afternoon. It's 3-0 to Tampa Bay. And it's going to be Rago with this free kick. Paul Hamilton's joined us in the commentary box. We'll uh, bring him in in just a moment. Let's just see the action here as Rago plays the ball to the edge of the penalty area, and it's won back by Tampa Bay. It'll be Savage who brings this one out of defense, and Frimpong takes a touch. Nice one-two with Savage. Frimpong gets it back. Referee lets play go on as he was fouled after that one, but it's in the end, he does haul back the play, and it's a free kick for Tampa Bay. Not in the action today, Paul. It's uh, it's been tough to watch. How do you think your teammates are going to be uh, feeling out there right now? Obviously, obviously it's disappointing uh, to be down three nothing. I mean, uh, you know, uh, we knew that we we had uh, to play for the fans here, and uh, you know, I think the guys are going to be disappointed in their performance today. Paul Hamilton uh, not out there on the pitch uh, today, but. Uh, 
fixture in the heart of the Eddie's defense this season. He's with us uh, for a few minutes in the commentary box here as we uh, talk about the last two games of the season. We've got about half an hour left in this one as Rago has possession again. And now Arguez to Chris Cooey. Chance for Jigalai to get a run out today, Paul, though, and uh, we'll get to see uh, what he can do today. Yeah, um, you know, he's come in, uh, he's had a few minutes the last couple of games, and he's uh, he's been a little bit of a, a spark up there. Uh, he likes to run, uh, he's, a, he's pretty fast, and, uh, you know, he, he likes to work hard as well. Ambersley's going to go up for a head of air, but he's beaten by Hatchy, and it drops down for Mulholland, Mulholland in the middle. West has won it back, though. Possibly a chance to play in Jigalai here. Here he is, edge of the penalty area. Likes to link up with Porter. Jigalai's continued his run. Kyle Porter looking to get some room for the cross, and he's done that really well. And in the end, it's a clearance almost off the line that uh, stopped Jigalai very nearly scoring a goal. You can see the replay there, Paul. Yeah, he came close. Porter did well uh, well to get around the outside of the defender, played the ball across the box, and uh, the defender just got there before uh, Elgar could. Chris Cooey with a chance to uh, get the cross in here, though. He's played it along the deck. Arguez tried a little trick to play in Caseros, but Frimpong has possession for Tampa, who now clear up to halfway. Cooey gets his head on it. Ambersley in a tussle with Hatchi, who tackles him well, but Cooey's going to have to go up for another header. This time he beats Antonio to the ball, and it's with Rago. Rago finding Caseros. They've got men forward here. Chasing on the left-hand side is Apong. Dominic Apong just moves into the central area, plays a pass for Jigalai. Rago might have a chance of a shot there. In the end, just Tampa Bay scrambling it away. But a couple of chances for FC Edmonton in the last few minutes. Well, Tampa, Tampa's had significant numbers back in, in those attacks. That's the luxury of having that 3-0 lead. You can, you can pull those numbers back. And it's a very crowded penalty area, even as Edmonton's threading that ball through. There were five, six green shirts back there, really making it difficult for Antonio Rago to try to get a shot off there. No real sight of goal as that ball was played out to him. Free kick for Tampa here. They, uh, they're they going to take their time. They look pretty happy with 3-0. What about the, the morale, Paul? Obviously, it's been such a tough season this year. 3-0 down again. What's morale like in the camp at the moment with, with not a lot to play for? Um, well, like you say, there's not a lot to play for, but there still is. I mean, we're, uh, we're playing for our fans. We're playing for the owner. We're playing for everyone that uh, um, has has helped us out along, along this year. And uh, though it may not be for uh, a playoff spot, you know, we still got to show something good, we've got to show something for next year, get the fans excited about next year. Corner kick taken short on that left-hand side of the field, and Hill's cross in, might drop for Ambersley on the edge of the area, slides a pass along the ground, Frimpong playing it back out of the box to Hill again. Another chance for him to put the cross in, and that will be picked up well by John Smith. Dan Antonio got his head to that ball again. And Paul, you know, you played with Dan last year, and you know what he can do. Is it, is it painful to see how successful he's been against this team this year. I think in both both matches here, he's uh, been a real influence on the match. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's a big body out there. Um, he holds the ball up well, uh, uses his frame uh, very well. And, uh, you know, he, he gets on the end of a lot of crosses. And he's, he's hurt us this year. And, uh, yeah, it does, uh, it does suck to see a little bit. 3-0 to Tampa Bay, that's the voice of Paul Hamilton, the FC Edmonton defender, joining myself, Gareth Hampshire, and Steve Sandor. At the moment, watching his teammates out there trying to claw their way back into this match, and it's with uh, Cooey at the moment, just uh, in front of his own penalty area. He picks out Kenny Caseros. Caseros, a forward ball looking for Craig, but it's intercepted by Tampa. Rago trying to win it back, but Frimpong's got Ambersley in behind the back four, he's offside. And the flag goes up. And that's where in the first half, uh, Edmonton had quite a bit of joy, Paul. Uh, balls in behind the Tampa defense, but uh, why do you think they've not been able to do it as much in the second half? Uh, we just haven't had control of the ball in the midfield as much uh, as the first half. Um, you know, uh, when Brian got on the ball, when uh, Sarasay got on the ball in the first half, they were, they were able to, to play some two balls, but it doesn't seem like it's uh, it's going for us in the second half here. And Ricky Hill did say he made that adjustment halfway through the first half by adding, a, going from like a 4-3-3 setup to a 4-4-2. 
crowding up the midfield a little bit more to take away some of that space. So that seems to have had a huge effect on the, on the match as well uh, in terms of Tampa trying to, 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 to make the game more compact than it had been maybe the first 20, 25 minutes. Marquez just over halfway, chips a pass over the top, Craig chasing it, but it's going to be Atanella's easy catch. His team leading 3-0 at the moment. He's going to just kick this one out of his hands, straight up the heart of the field. Dominic Capone winning the header, winning the second ball as well. And Porter linking up nicely with Caseros, Rago making the overlap. Antonio Rago chipping a ball up, looking for Craig, but that's headed away by Tampa as well. What do you think the last 20 minutes, Paul? What's, uh, what's the key here now? Obviously, uh, not give up any more goals. Um, try and score one ourselves. Uh, you know, give, give the fans something, something to be happy about uh, other than the scoreline. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Cheers. Paul Hamilton with us at Clark Stadium. We'll go down and wish his teammates the best now in the last uh, 20 minutes of the match. And I think fair to say they've missed him today. Yeah, I think it's probably painful for him to watch when he sees some of the, the open looks that Tampa's had in the middle of the in the middle of the defense there. Uh, when, when he sees someone like Antonia go, go unmarked and, and score a goal and then unmarked set up another one, it's uh, it's got to paint, paint, paint a central defender when he sees that 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 uh, that happen, and you're you're helpless to, to do anything about it. Steve Sandor and myself, Gareth Hampshire, live from Clark Stadium today in the last 20 minutes of the match, live on Shaw TV, Team 1260, and streaming live online at cbc.ca/edmonton/soccer. Rago's uh, making a break on the right-hand overlap here. Rago. Growing in confidence as this match has gone on. A pack pass back to Caseros and square now to Arguez. Arguez moving to the left-hand side. That's where West is in a crossing position. In comes the cross, but he scuffs it low. Maybe took his eye off the ball. And Tampa come away with it with Frimpong. Ambersley again is in space on the right-hand side. There's only two of them forward, so Frimpong now makes the pass. Playing it back into the midfield and Mulholland. Shane Hill has just had so much time on the ball. Now Campbell, another pass wide to the right and Mulholland. Frimpong's towards the near post. They don't find him and it'll be a chance for West to get it clear. Jigalai trying to control the ball on the halfway mark, battling for it as well. He's lost possession, but he's not giving it up and in the end concedes the free kick to Tampa Bay. You know, he just had Paul Hamilton in the booth and sometimes you know, unfortunately, it's, it's situations like this where you really get to understand who's valuable to a team. And it's when these when they're absent from the lineup and we see how much a team has changed when they're not there, uh, you, you get a feeling for just how much a, a player can mean to a team. Without Paul Hamilton there today, Edmonton looks like a very different team. Paul Holland on the right-hand side, a cut back to Ambersley, plays it to the edge of the area. There's still a chance for Tampa here. Frimpong in the penalty box. Rago getting a challenge in, and in second, Gutsy tackle. That's uh, vintage Antonio Rago there. Two sliding challenges and preventing the cross coming in. Still a chance for Tampa though, attacking from the right hand side. Campbell slides a pass in along the deck for Ambersley. Plays a 1 2 on the edge of the area. The Eddies win it back. And it's Paul Craig trying to release Porter and exploit the pace he's got down that right hand side of the field. Porter's got to the ball. Yamada's watching him very, very closely. And in the end, he just does enough to push him into touch and keep the throw in for Tampa Bay. And really, that, that part of the game is gone that we saw in the first 20 minutes where, where Edmonton was playing diagonal balls through and getting getting players behind behind the back line. We haven't seen that in the last 40 minutes or so. And that, that Tampa's addressed that. Good save this time. Ambersley might get the rebound in, but Smith gets low to his right-hand side and does very well indeed to make a double stop tonight Pico and then Ambersley and you know once again everyone's backing off letting him have the shot it, it, it's really simple as, as simple as the Ambersley chance uh, that no one uh, when Frimpong picks up that pass there's two defenders there and neither one wants to take the shot away from him no one wants to challenge him to make a move around and, and they let him have that shot and John Smith is forced to a difficult save 
Good play from the corner there by Smiths as well. A supreme catch. Plays the pass early out from his goal kick as well, looking for Zhigalai, but it's won back by Tampa Bay again. Yamada still in the half, still up for the corner, wins the ball back, but Kui intercepts it. Now Rago, right-hand side, a forward pass to Craig. Craig controls it and wins a throw-in for the Eddies on the right wing. Throws it back to Antonio Rago. And Rago's pass forward to Apong is controlled and played back for Antonio Rago. He's looking for some support ahead of him. Switches play to the left-hand side. Here's Adam West. 3-0 Tampa leads. West forward to the edge of the area. Zhigalai, just a threaded little dig pass, which was uh, a trifle too long for Porter, and runs through to the goalkeeper. Still 3-0. I think it was a clever pass, and he caught Porter a little bit by surprise by that pass, too. Porter wasn't expecting him to move that ball off the outside of his foot. Shane Hill with a great forward ball to Pico, who tries to go around his man. The substitute for Tampa Bay and strikes it towards goal. Easy in the end for Smith, but Hill stretching the Eddie's defense there with a long ball. We've seen a good range of passing from uh, Shane Hill today. Good performance from him, one of many in the uh, Tampa Bay team. Arguez in the midfield for FC Edmonton here, in possession on his right foot, finds Craig. Craig will switch it to the right wing. Here's Antonio Rago. Rago just takes a touch with his right foot, picks out Arguez, who continued his run. Rago again to Arguez. It's going to drop back to Kui. Kui right footed is a long forward ball. Yamada will head that one clear, but a pong cushions a header down for Craig. Craig still got possession, edge of the penalty area. Nice move to create some shooting space for him, and even then, was close as it deflected wide and goes out for a corner for Edmonton. Yeah, that deflection would have caught uh, Jeff Atnella, totally wrong-footed there. Atnella was leaning towards towards his left as that ball veered back towards his right, and he was staggering to get back there. He saw he crashed into the post uh, as, as that ball was spinning, spinning just wide. But... Uh, a little bit of bad luck, but would have been on both sides there had that uh, ball gone in. Good, I mean, good fortune for Edmonton there, but uh, it would have been unlucky on Tampa. Corner to the near post, headed away from West Corner. Didn't get it over the first defender. He's got a second chance here. Mulholland shadow winning him. West nutmegs him nicely, puts over a great cross this time. It might still drop for Craig on the far post. Left-footed strike just past the upright, but he got everything behind it. Paul Craig's been a real spark for Edmonton since he's come into the game for Michael Cox. Uh, willing to take the shot there. Not a bad effort on the left foot uh, on the volley. Uh, you know, with, with the angle and the way that he was being challenged there by a defender. Don't know if, if Arango would have given him an angle to get that on goal, but uh, but just still a good effort to take and uh, at least do something threatening, push back a little bit, because really in this half, Edmonton hasn't had the life that they had in the first half, and, and Tampa Bay's been pretty successful in pushing them back for, for most of this half. 3-0, Tampa Bay leads the Eddies with 15 minutes to go in the match as a Pong wins a header, but Mulholland's in space on the right-hand side to pick up the pieces. Forward pass to Ambersley, Ambersley turning away around the corner, back to Mulholland, edge of the area, flips it over the defence, tries to get on the end of his own pass. Almost like a rugby little Gary Owen boot there, but it's picked up by Smiths in the end. And now it's Hatchy, Hatchy right-hand side, forward pass to Caceres, who plays it back for Arguez. Arguez just boots it long, and that'll run through for Jeff Catanella. 3-0 the score. It's Tampa Bay now, 15 minutes left in this match. They're just looking forward just to, 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 to nurse this game home. They don't need to really do much else other than to make sure that a, that uh, you get through, build that confidence going to next week, and uh, so well, don't get anyone hurt. That's, uh, that's also a, that's also part of the thought process now. Stay with us for our post-game show at the conclusion of this one. We'll have interviews from pitch side from both sides. The FCE TV post-game show coming up after the match, which is 3-0 to the Tampa Bay Rowdies at the moment. Hatchy turning and finding a pass over the top, which Porter might get on the end of this one. Porter still chasing into the penalty area. Terrific save by Atinella. More a point-blank reaction than anything else. He probably couldn't get out of the way of it, is how he stopped it, but Porter did very, very well to chase that one down. 
even though there were defenders climbing all over him, he got the shot away, but just couldn't beat Jeff Attinella, and that probably about sums up the Eddie's day today. Yep. And Edmonton still hasn't broken its duck against Tampa this year. Uh, still scoreless, and Attenella with his best save of the, of the match. He made a really good save early this match off Porter. Where Porter had a single touch off of a ball in the middle. But this one, Porter does well to shield the ball to, 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 to keep possession as he's surrounded by Tampa defenders and, and get that chance off. Another chance, Gigolai chasing it this time. It's still in the Tampa penalty area. Porter gets his chest on it. Maybe a chance in the bouncing ball to play it back for Craig who strikes it and blazes it wide. And here we'll have a look at that uh, chance of Kyle Porter again. Good long ball by Hatchie, but uh, Porter gets behind the defenders there, but but really he's he's even by the time he gets to the ball, and just the luck of the bounce and uh, the Tampa Bay defender falling down creates a chance for him. But Atanella does well to come off the line, take that chance away. Good save by, by the keeper, and, and, and a guy who's really had Edmonton's number this year, uh, Jeff Atanella, he must, uh, must love playing up here uh, because uh, he just doesn't give up goals when he faces the Eddies. And the Eddies have had chances in these games. The other end, it's Tampa on the attack. This time, Raphael Cox is also on as a substitute, playing the ball into the midfield, and it's switched to the right-hand side, and Campbell. Campbell moves it forward, but he's given that one away. West has the ball. West to Craig. Craig just playing behind the front man and trying to slip a pass through for Zigalai there, but it runs all the way through for Hattenau. 11 minutes left. No goals for Edmonton again against Tampa. Must be an offside flag up there. It looked like there was a Tampa player well offside, but the judge not to have been interfering. The Smith clears the ball away from his penalty area. The Pong goes up, wins a header. Drops in there for Craig. Craig on the left-hand side of the field. Good uh, battling by Paul Craig. He's uh, started another attack, and then he gets pushed down and wins a free kick. For FC Edmonton, he's uh, injected a bit of life into the team. A little bit of passion too, I think. Uh, he's been fighting for his chance. He's been fighting for the ball, and uh, I think in a game in which we've seen uh, Edmonton look lax for a lot of the match, uh, it's it's been a, a positive injection of uh, someone who's uh, who's showing a lot of uh, of passion on the badge right now, and that's what Paul Craig's brought in. Into uh, the penalty area for Aguez. He's tackled by Yamada, and then Hill has possession. They play it back to Stuart Campbell again. And right-footed, he'll clear the ball towards halfway. Header flicked on by Pico. And they've got a free kick just on the halfway line, Tampa Bay. Less than 10 minutes left for them. They're pretty happy at the moment, not in any hurry to take these free kicks. And they're coasting towards a victory. There's their coach, Ricky Hill. Still some passion from him from the sidelines. Former Luton Town player. And there's his son in the middle of the park. Hill in possession. Going it to the right-hand side and Campbell. Hill gets the ball back, left-footed for forward pass to Ambersley. Ambersley holds it up nicely. Mo Holland, another crossing chance on the right-hand side. Tight, tight, tight! Tampa Bay just passing the ball around, keeping possession here in the closing stages. O'Brien now threading it through nicely, though. They've got a man right behind the back here. Can he find the cutback? In comes the cross, and Smith again. Very safe hands as he claims that catch. Yeah, Smith has got to feel like uh, he's been left out there or hung out there to dry a few times today, and a good catch doesn't allow that to become any sort of trouble. 3 0 to Tampa Bay at Clark Stadium. The score at the moment, we're well into the last 10 minutes as John Smith. Plays the ball outside of his penalty area to Cooey. Cooey passing it back to him. Smith's getting the ball on his right foot now and clearing it past halfway. Zigalai heading it down for Paul Craig. It'll drop for Arguez, who switches play to the left flank. And it's West. West midway inside the Tampa half. Gets the ball back from Dominic Apol. Pong again, forward pass to Zigalai. Zigalai. Does well to hold the ball up for a pong. Will now try and thread it in behind the fullback for Rago. Rago just cutting it back a little too far. One of the best moves of the match there from FC Edmonton. And Rago again, dangerous, getting in behind the fullback. 
the other end, though, there's a chance for Hill if he can only get on the end of that through ball from Tampa. But Caseros is back. He dropped into that defensive role to cover for Rago, doing excellent work for the team there. And his pass up the right hand side to Antonio Rago goes out of touch for a throw in. Yeah, I saw Caseros there backed off, read that play early that uh, they're going to be short at the back and does well to be a safety valve there and cut off the play. And that's what uh, Edmonton needed more of a little bit earlier in the game, is a bit uh, of, of that, of players filling in and, and, and doing those things. And it was good to see, uh, see Kenny do it there. Uh, unfortunately, I think this is a game where everything's a little too little too late for the Eddies. Seven minutes left of the 90. It's 3-0 to Tampa Bay, and it's Mulholland again on the right-hand side. He's had a lot of the ball this afternoon. Mulholland trying to go around West, but West just outwitting him on that occasion and stealing possession back, playing a pass up the left wing. Zhigalai can't make much of it. Out to the left-hand side here in Arango. Of space for Arango here. They're just going to keep possession now in the back area as much as they can. Switching play to the right wing. And then we feel for O'Brien. Well, Holland just pushing that one around the corner, but Hachi coming out to win it back. But uh, a bit of a misunderstanding sends away Tampa looking for a fourth goal here in the end. It's a good covering tackle by Chris Cooey. But more disorganization in the Eddie's defense results in a corner for Tampa. Yeah, Hatch gave that ball, gave up possession away too, way too easily there. And, and Tampa came flying forward in numbers. And uh, uh, Chris Cooley with the tackle there, but still a corner, still very dangerous. We've seen how dangerous uh, corners have been FC Edmonton all day long. Well, Holland's corner from the right hand side towards the penalty spot and a good header away by Kyle Porter. Another chance for Mulholland to cross from the right-hand side. This time to the near post. West goes up, heads it straight up in the air, wins the second header as well. Hill driving onto that, a shot that's blocked. Mulholland, the second attempt with the cross. Real scramble in there, the Eddies can't clear it. And Tampa turning the screw here. A 3-0 lead and another chance from this right-hand side for Mulholland. Tees up the ball for Campbell. There goes the cross, and it's cleared by Arguez. Hill again has possession back, now he's dispossessed by Antonio Rago, plays a pass all along the ground for Zhigalai. Just past halfway, Zhigalai using his speed to try and get away from his marker. Right-hand side, plays it into Porter. Now Arguez arriving. Arguez to Zhigalai, runs around it beautifully there. Zhigalai still going. Arguez in the penalty area, tackled by Tampa, who just do enough again to hold on. And it seemed as though that was going to be a certain goal for FC Edmonton but could not get it over the line. Wonderful dummy by Zhigalai there, stepping over the ball and actually throwing off the defenders there and 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 uh, throwing off Jeff Atnella in the, in the goal there. Nice little little cushion pass here from Arguez to, to Zhigalai. He steps over the ball, gets around Rodriguez there, cuts it back, but Rodriguez recovers in time, slides and gets that ball before Arguez can get there. I think Jiggle, I thought he'd set up Arguez for a tap in there. But I've been really impressed by what I've seen from Elvier and would like to see him maybe get a little more time as we see uh, Dino Gardner come into the game for FC Edmonton, a, a guy who's played the under-20 level for Canada at, uh, at right back uh, and uh, a player that was with Toronto FC Academy up until uh, until last year and left that team uh, to, uh, to get more playing time. And, uh, this is, uh, again, an exciting young Canadian player who we haven't seen at this level yet, and we really like to, uh, to see what he can do. 3-0 the score to Tampa Bay Rowdies against FC Edmonton. And we are into the last four minutes of the game with Tampa in possession again. With Raphael Cox, the left-hand side, playing the ball back for Hill in the end. Hill. Has to move it around that left wing. Rago's going to be in trouble here for a late challenge, and that uh, already the referee has the yellow card in his hand, waiting for Rago to get up. That's a yellow for Antonio Rago. Yeah, late challenge, a little bit sloppy there from Antonio, and uh, it goes in the book there. He's actually got hurt himself uh, in that tackle, too. He's still limping along, but gets himself back into position to Mark Cox. Play this one quickly up the left-hand side. Arango. The end 
Molina. The Eddies have the ball back now with Arguez. Out of his own penalty area is Hachi bringing it out. Hachi wide to the left-hand side. It's West. West in field for Brian Arguez. Just takes a touch past Hill. Arguez has made a good break forward here. Good strides, and now Porter on the edge of the penalty area. Jigalai's trying to find space in the box. Porter taking it around his man again. Left foot of cut back, maybe. He's dispossessed, but wins a corner for FC Edmonton. See here, FC Edmonton can try to snatch something positive here. They've had a couple of very good attacks late in this match to try to get a consolation goal. We'll see here if we can, they can get something more uh, from this pressure they've got late in the game. Porter is going to take the corner towards the penalty spot. Craig was trying to go up in the air, but beaten to the header. Mulholland now for Tampa. Trying to play this one over the top of the Eddie's defense. Raphael Cox has controlled it nicely and looks to play in Ambersley, but has put that ball into touch. Rago still hurting from that previous challenge, which earned him a yellow card. He's gone down just on the edge of the penalty box and needs a bit of treatment. We've got a stoppage in play with a minute and a half left of the 90. And uh, if, he, if he goes off, that's going to be... Uh, Ed Edmonton doesn't have any more subs. They brought in Gardner, they brought in Craig, they brought in Jigalai, so they've uh, they've used their three that they're allocated. So uh, if, uh, if, if Antonio has to go off, they're going to play the rest of the game with uh, 10 men. Harry Sinkgraven looking from the sidelines, wondering... Uh, what his next move could be. Rago's actually hopping off the pitch. He can't put weight on his left foot. So I think you're right, Steve. It's probably going to be, will be, last minute and a half with 10 men. Yeah, as, uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, there's no point now in running Antonio Rago back out there and, and, hoping, and, and exaggerating any injury he may have picked up when he picked up that yellow card. You're better off just playing with 10 men, playing it out and, uh, and protecting him as a player and not asking him to go back out there. Dominic Pong in the midfield, switching play to Gardner. Gardner getting a nice first touch to Cooey and then making an overlapping run down the right wing. Cooey playing it through the middle to Craig. Craig dispossessed, gets a trailing boot at the ball, but the referee said the tackle was from behind, and it's a free kick to Tampa Bay. Dino Gardner was with the under-20 team in a recent exhibition series in Mexico. Played in that series, and... Uh, uh, you know, you just never get used to the conditions down there, and it's a real challenge for the Canadian team, but the kind of things that they need going forward if they're going to build as a national program and, and getting their players more meaningful experience in games like that in places like in, in playing in Mexico and playing uh, internationally. Two minutes of injury time will be played here. Tampa Bay still leading by three goals to nil, and another attack starting for them, but Pico's ball over the top. And run through easily for Smith, who clears it with a bounce off the ground and a half volley clearance. Yamada has possession for Tampa Bay. We'll play a pass to the right hand side. Look lively, Pico, since he's come on, plays a pass through to Ambersley there, but a little too strong for him. And it's Gardner again who gets the ball from the goalkeeper. Easy pass in field to Arguez. Arguez is pulled down the right hand side, gives Jigalai a lot to do. He's not going to be able to keep that one in play. It's a goal kick to Tampa Bay, and we're into injury time, and the Rowdies lead by three goals to nil. The Rowdies will feel really good about this, this one. They know that with a couple of games left, they still have, have a real shot at, at maybe even. Uh, get, getting ahead of San Antonio, maybe uh, maybe creating some uh, uh, a, a situation where they can take the number one seed in the playoffs. But they really consolidate their position today uh, as as uh, being at least a two seed and, and getting a bye in the playoffs. And of course, we're not going to worry about any of this next season because uh, with the new split season format next year, it'll, it'll all be about who wins each half. And, uh, uh, it will uh, change quite a bit. We'll be talking about seeds and who finishes second, third, fourth, fifth. It's uh, winning the league next year is all that's going to matter uh, in, in terms of uh, the, the split season we're going to have in uh, 2013. Stay tuned for our post-game show. Coming up after the conclusion of the match here, which is seconds away now. More Holland in possession, left-hand side this time. Little pass in field for Pico. Does well to keep the ball alive, and Yamada playing it to Raphael Cox, getting it back again. 
left hand side just inside the Edmonton half and the whistle puts Edmonton out of their misery that's full time a 3-0 defeat for the Eddies yeah and, and, and as, as, as well as the Eddies played in the first 20 minutes you, you can't say that uh, based on, on on the full balance of the 90 minutes and the chances that Tampa created uh, that, that they didn't deserve more. Yes, Edmonton, by by the virtue of some of the offense they created, probably deserved a goal. We saw some some nice plays from Craig, Jigalai, some chances there by Kyle Porter. He created a lot. But they certainly didn't deserve to create enough goals to win this game uh, based on how poorly they defended and how, how, how much Tampa Bay, after they made that adjustment to go to 4-4-2, dominated the midfield. You know, Tampa's full value for the three points today, and they uh, they deserve this win. And, and really, John Smith was called in to make a couple of very good saves late in this game, where Tampa Bay could have made the, put, put, put another couple of goals up on the board. Thanks for joining us on Gold TV. Good night. Thanks for watching. And everyone else, uh, stay with us for our post-game show. It finished at Clark Stadium. FC Edmonton nil, Tampa Bay Rowdies three. Edmonton. For over 25 years, Rohit Communities has been building homes in Edmonton and area, offering a variety of home styles, including duplexes, townhomes, bungalows, apartment condos, and single-family homes. Rohit Communities can be found in 12 locations. More information is available at rohitcommunities.com. years, Rohit Communities has been building homes in Edmonton and area, offering a variety of home styles, including duplexes, townhomes, bungalows, apartment condos, and single-family homes. Rohit Communities can be found in 12 locations. More information is available at rohitcommunities.com. Edmonton. Welcome back to Clark Stadium. The full-time score, FC Edmonton nil, the Tampa Bay Rowdies three. Our post-game show continues now with Ricky Hill, the coach from Tampa. Steve. Hey, Coach Hill. Uh, must be pretty happy the, the way the second half unfolded to get that goal so early in the half to sort of take the life out of the game. Absolutely. It couldn't have worked out better for us in regards to yeah, we knew the next goal was going to be crucial, uh, as 2-0 always is. If Edmonton manage to score it, then they're back in the game. They believe they can get something from the game. If we score it, then it's a lot harder task for Edmonton to try and get three back to get something and four to win. So delighted to, to get that goal so early in the second half, as you rightly say. And, um, you know, Edmonton always stuck at it. They always looked likely to score on, on the occasions they attacked. And I felt, you know, during the second period, we were a little bit sloppy towards the end of the game in regards to our ball retention and then our recovery of the ball after we'd given it away. 
Now, were you a little bit surprised at maybe how how easy the goals came for you today? A, a lot of a lot of open players uh, in Edmonton territory today. A lot of unmarked players you took advantage of. Yeah, and um, like, you've, like you rightly say, there was more opportunities as the game progressed. To, if we were a little bit more clinical in our final pass or our timing of pass, we could have perhaps had a little bit more goals to talk about. I'm not going to complain. Scoring three goals in any game is uh, is great. Um, and we're obviously delighted that we've managed to get the three points and that gets us, you know, closer to getting that, claiming that second place in the league. Or first, if San Antonio slip up in the next couple of games, I don't know what their score is currently today. But yeah, Edmonton, obviously, they, when we did score the first couple of goals in the first half, they had to come on the offensive and that means pushing extra men forward, I guess, from the defensive areas and it leaves them a little bit exposed. And I just think if our play was a little bit more clinical, we could have maybe enjoyed a couple more opportunities. And I guess now looking forward uh, to the last couple of games of the season for you and the playoffs, really how, how, how realistic are, are you looking to, to be there right at the end? Yeah, that's, that's the game plan. It always has been from day one and start of the season. We've tried to set little goals and, and targets. I think at this moment in time, I mean, we've had two defeats in the last 15 or 16 league games, which speaks volumes for the, the attitude of the players and the resilience of the players. And, you know, one thing I've, I've said about my team is that irrespective of what the score is, they compete for the whole 90 minutes plus. And we were 3-0 down after 35 minutes in San Antonio. We, we ended up losing 4-0 on the night, but I was proud of the way we went out second half and took the game to them and, and controlled the second half. So all things being equal, if we defend correctly, we have, we've got a great chance of competing against most teams in the league. All right, well, thank you. Good luck in the playoffs, coach. My pleasure. Take care. Ricky Hill, the coach for Tampa Bay Rowdies, and a very happy coach as well at the moment. Three goals, as he says, pretty good on any day, and it's good enough today for his team, a 3-0 victory against FC Edmonton. Harry Sinkgraven just getting set up on pitch side. We will talk to him in just a moment, the coach for FC Edmonton. At halftime, he was pleased with the start, but not pleased with the end of the first half for his team, hoping for an early goal that in the end went to Tampa Bay and uh, made it very difficult in the second half. Harry, thanks for joining us. Um, what, uh, what's your feeling looking back on the 90 minutes today? Well, of course, uh, disappointed about the result, 3-0. That's uh, not what we, uh, what we expected, not what we want. Uh, we wanted to, uh, to uh, do something for our fans. And, uh, and yeah, and, and if you look at the result, 3-0, yeah, that, that we not succeeded in that. Uh, if you look to the, to the way we played, uh, well, in halftime we said already the first 25 minutes uh, was pretty good. We also had some scoring opportunities. Also, second half by moments, by moments we played well. We uh, also second half we have a lot of scoring opportunities, but yeah, the final touch was not there. And uh, at the end, at the end, the last 10-15 uh, minutes, you can see that everybody's tired, and then uh, there are so many gaps uh, in the field, and we are not playing uh, compact anymore. And, and yeah, the game was over. How do you lift your players, Harry, for the next uh, for, for the last game of the season now? Well, at least we have uh, we have a week to uh, to build something. Uh, the last uh, the last week we had uh, three games uh, in one week, so uh, that's also why the guys were tired at the end. Uh, so this week we will uh, first we will recover from this game, and and uh, from uh, uh, Wednesday on we will uh, prepare for the next game. And I know difficult for you to sum up in one question, but w last year when we were talking, the gold seemed to be flying in. Confidence was sky high. What's what's happened this year that's just made it more of a struggle for you, Harry? Well, I think the the biggest uh, the biggest difference is that uh, we had so much problems with uh, scoring goals this year that that was our biggest problem. And if you look to the the start of the season. Um, uh, we we won we lost a lot of a lot of games with one nil I think six or seven uh, almost in a row and uh, and in the beginning of the season we also had a lot of problems with uh, set pieces defensively uh, later in the season we didn't uh, conceive a lot of goals from set pieces but the scoring uh, that, that was the biggest problem this this season. Okay, Harry, thank you. Okay. Harry Sinkraven, the coach for FC Edmonton, joining us again at full time. Uh, tough for him again today, a three nil defeat for his team. Yeah, and he talked about the set pieces being a problem early in the year, but it really has become a problem the last couple of home games. We've seen those 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 problems rear up again. Obviously, today we saw it with it with a goal that was far too easy for Daniel Antoniuk. 
in the first half where he's absolutely left unmarked on that free kick from Mulholland. And, and we saw it in the game against Atlanta that they had a couple of weeks ago where they had a th long throw that went in on an open header. There's been too many men left wide open in the box on these set pieces and, uh, and they profited from those chances. And, uh, and, and we have Daniel Antonio here who uh, seems to really enjoy his trips back to Edmonton this year. A uh, couple of games, uh, goals in, in each of them and uh, been a real factor. And tell us about coming back, how much it means to you to score against uh, Edmonton. Um, you know, it's always great to score against your former team. Um, you always have an extra chip on your shoulder when you're when you're going against, you know, the guys you played for last year. So, of, of course, it feels great to, to score. And, you know, more importantly, we got the win. Um, but, yeah, you know, I, I, I got a lot of a, a lot of heart for this place. I like it. I had a good time here, um, you know, so I'm on the other side of the fence. And, it, you know, that's that's kind of what this business is sometimes. And you know, it felt great, but, you know, I still got a lot of respect for this place. Yeah, and uh, here we, we have the goal here lined up, and maybe walk us through it and talk about uh, that opening goal on the, on the free kick from, from Mulholland. You know, he, he, he whips in a good ball. Um, you know, he curls it in. I was running across the face of the goal before he even hit it, so, you know, I, was, I had a good, a good step in front of my guy, and I just had to get a little flick on it. I mean, he whipped it pretty strong. So, you know, we got a lot of different weapons. Um, you know, I try and get in front of the box and cause as much problems as I can. And, you know, we have other quick little crafty guys. We got creative guys in the midfield with good vision. And, we're, you know, the pieces are coming together for us. We have a pretty good team and, you know, we're gelling pretty well at the end of the season here. We're trying to trying to get second, maybe first. But I think, uh, you know, we're finishing the season off pretty well. Uh, on that goal and, and the one you set up later in the game with the header across uh, across the box, were you surprised at how much space that you found yourself in? Um, you know, I guess. On, on that play, I kind of just drifted far post, and um, sometimes when those guys see me out there far post, they hang it up and they let me run up there and, and, and win it. Um, and that's kind of kind of what he did. It was almost going out of bounds. There wasn't really a chance for me to head it in, so I just, you know, had to smash it about uh, across the, the face of the a goal. And um, you know, we had two guys there crashing the box, and um, they were able to put it in. So, you know. We're all working together, a good ball over the top, me heading it back across and the other guys being there to put it in. I mean, it's, it's, it's a collective effort and I think that's what's making us a really strong team and hard to beat right now. All right, well, good luck in the rest of the season. You, you have a lot of fans here still in the city. All right, thanks guys. Daniel Antonio joining us from pitch side. Pretty happy with his team, a 3-0 victory for the Tampa Bay Rowdies over FC Edmonton today. Well, the chap who went closest to scoring for the Eddies was Kyle Porter, a second-half chance. A couple of chances in the first half as well when he got in behind the defense of Tampa Bay and uh, really caused some problems. He's been in a rich vein of form, and uh, he's going to join us at pitch side in uh, a moment or two. Kyle Porter, one of the forwards for FC Edmonton, and uh, he's been very keen to play well for the owner, for the team, and today not quite working out the way the Eddies would have hoped. Kyle, thanks for joining us. Just tell us, uh, if you can, how, how the players are feeling uh, after, after a tough one today. Uh, we're pretty down. Um, it was a hard game, especially with the amount of chances we had. So, um, yeah, it's just today was a very unlucky day for us. A tough one as well, especially seeing as I, I know that uh, the, the talk in the camp has been about ending on a high note for the fans and for the owner. Um, what can you say about, uh, I mean, what would you say to the fans and the owner today? Uh, we just have to apologize. Well, personally, I, you know, I feel that we should apologize. You know, um, we started off the game well, um, but we just we just let down. And, uh, you know, like here, I shanked a shot and, you know, maybe my head wasn't in it. But, you know, I think we had the chances to win today. And um, unfortunately, we are unlucky. This is a part of the game. But we, we just have to apologize, and you know, next game is going to be a different game, and we want to end on the highest note possible. Tell us uh, from the players' point of view, Kyle, what, what you do now between now and next Sunday to, to end on that high note to, to try to turn things around. You know, finish the week strong in training. Uh, obviously, we have to look back at the video because there's a lot of great moments in this game, I feel. Um, but yeah, just keep our heads high and stay motivated. We can't, we can't let this get the best of us, and we have to know that our fans are behind us. So will be all right for next game. And um, in fairness to the fans, they, they sort of have stuck with you this season, Kyle, haven't they? Yeah, they have. They have, most definitely. And, and we're so thankful for that and grateful. So every game, we just want to you know, say thanks. 
Thanks again, Kyle. All right, thank you. Kyle Porter, uh, good of him to join us. Uh, another tough loss for his team, a 3-0 defeat for the Eddies against the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Let's take a look back at the highlights from today's game. Here we see that first goal from Daniel Antoniak. He says he starts his run before the free kick. Still doesn't excuse the lack of a defender making that run with him to the, to the far post. And it's, it's far too easy for Daniel Antoniak there. And, and here we have Mike Amersley, a uh, very good player. And yet everyone backs off there. We see Kevin Hatchie backing off, giving him acres of space. And, and what does he do? He picks the corner. And uh, when you give a player that kind of time and space, they're, they're going to pick corners at, at this level of soccer. And here we have, again, Daniel Antonio unmarked. And as he said, smash that ball back across the face of goal. Smart veteran player knows to create a chance there. And, and, and Tampa Bay's outnumbering the, the, the Edmonton defenders in front of goal. But really, it begins with no one picking up that header on the back post. If they bother him, harry him, maybe he doesn't get that direct header down that causes trouble. One more game for the Eddies next Sunday and they have to hope that it can end in a better way than this one did today. A 3-0 defeat for FC Edmonton today. For over 25 years, Rohit Communities has been building homes in Edmonton and area, offering a variety of home styles, including duplexes, townhomes, bungalows, apartment condos, and single-family homes. Rohit Communities can be found in 12 locations. More information is available at rohitcommunities.com. Edmonton. One of the unique aspects of FC Edmonton is the reserve team. The Eddies reserves have been playing full time in the Alberta Major Soccer League this season. With the 2012 season coming to a close, FC Edmonton is honored to present its 2012 roster of players. Number four is Alan Zibi, who's from Paris, France. He's 19 years old and is a midfielder for the FC Reserves. He's been on the score sheet once this season. Number 16 is Julian Sansano. He's 18 years old and is a native Edmontonian. He's a midfielder for the Reserves. Ajiz Sakaria, number seven, is also from Edmonton. He's 19 and plays striker. He's been on target seven times this season. Number one is Norbert Janus, who's from Edmonton. At 19 years old, he's the goalkeeper for the FC Reserves. Milan Roberts, number two, is from Sierra Leone. He's 20 years old and plays in defense. The number nine is Edom Mortotzi, who's from Ghana. He's 19 years old, plays in midfield, and he scored five goals this season. Number 11 is Bruno Zibi, who's from Paris, France. He's 17, is a striker, and has scored five goals this season. Marko Aleksic, number 15, is from Belgrade, Serbia. He's 15 years old and is a defender for the reserves. Number three is Mark Kudlubiki from Sherwood Park. He's 18 years old, plays in midfield for the reserves, and he's been on target once this season. Hansen Boakai, number 10, is from Liberia. He's 16 and plays in midfield. He's scored three times this season. Number 14 is Ima Sige from Cameroon. He's 15 years old and is a striker for the reserves. He scored five goals this season. Number eight is Ajay Cabra, who's from Edmonton. He's 18 years old and is a striker for the reserves. He scored twice this season. Officially started February 1st as far as having an academy group which which grew into our reserve team. The other three uh, Canadian teams in the MLS they run uh, pro academies and they're looking to develop their own players 
So of course, every player you can bring up to your own system. It's a player you don't have to draft, you don't have to go and scout for and find uh, they already belong to you. So really, it's our job here to develop players that eventually will play for our first team. The Alberta Soccer Association is kind enough to uh, allow us to be the regional area for Northern Alberta to be the developmental center with them, have, working with them. So we're prepared to take that on and uh, we've done a very good job. We have the coaching staff, we have the personnel. Alberta Soccer is prepared to help. St. Joseph's High School is prepared, us pre prepared to take them in. They are the special school in, Al in Alberta that actually allows kids to develop at their own level. It's a wonderful school. It's, it's, it's great for them, the principal and every, all the staff there are, are, are superb with the kids and the kids have done very well at school and we're happy to have them there and we hope that in the near future we're going to have a girls division as well because that's really a follow through to the Women's World Cup and we need to get a, a, a vision for the women as well. You know I think our, our owner Tom Fath has been very clear about wanting us to have a Canadian content to this program. Um, already we have more Canadians that play on a professional team, our first team than, any other, than the other three teams. So for us, yeah, absolutely, it's, it's a way of kind of um, maybe making people in Alberta more aware of soccer at the professional level, uh, introducing our young players, giving them something to play for when they're young. Um, we've always said, you know, what we need here for players is a professional program, but well, now we have one. And now we have a high school academy to go with it, so there's, for a lot of the young kids, we'll become kind of their dream. I have been with FC Reserve since April, so the last four months now. It's been pretty good. Uh, training's pretty good. I like to train. I like the atmosphere here. It's pretty professional. Compared to what I was doing before, it's a lot, a lot faster, a lot more intense, uh, a lot more tactical game. Technique's a lot better. Pace is pretty phenomenal. Best thing about being on the reserve team is just uh, we have a sense of family around here. Everyone's around the same age. I play with a lot of these guys, so it's pretty good. And this year, uh, I think in October, November, we may announce that at least two or three of these players from this team are going to fill uh, the roster of our first team and, been, and be signed as pro, pro contract. And we hope that maybe three or four a year will do that. Um, if you were to come, most, most people will say, if you were to come and watch our players in those games, you wouldn't pick out which ones were in high school. So I think that's a credit to the work they put in, in the, on the reserve team, in the academy. And I think it's also a great sign for, for FC Edmonton because we've got these young players that can play at that level. Clock Stadium today have finished FC Edmonton nil, Tampa Bay Rowdies three. Stay with us, we'll wrap things up after this. For over 25 years, Rohit Communities has been building homes in Edmonton and area, offering a variety of home styles, including duplexes, townhomes, bungalows, apartment condos, and single family homes. Rohit Communities can be found in 12 locations. More information is available at rohitcommunities.com. Edmonton. One more game to go for FC Edmonton, the last game of the season next Sunday, and that's against the Fort Lauderdale Strikers. If you can't be here, you can join us live on Shore TV, streaming live on cbc.ca, and live on the Team 1260. And they'll be hoping for a much better effort than today. I think effort being the key word. There, there were some, some flashes on the offense that looked good for Edmonton today. But defensively, just not enough, not enough passion, not enough uh, will, to, will to win being shown by the defenders there, leaving, leaving players wide open, not getting tackles and not being physical enough, and, and really allowing Tampa Bay into your own area, area, into your own penalty area far too easily uh, throughout the match, and, and really leaving uh, keeper John Smith hung out to dry on too many occasions there. Simply got to show more passion. More players got to look in the mirror and say, Got to, got to play for this badge. Got to play really for myself. I, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to make an impression for next year that I want to keep a starting job or, or, or keep a job with this club. And they, they need, need a lot better from the players than they saw uh, today. Let's recap the scoring again one more time today from Clark Stadium. 3-0, the full-time score for the Tampa Bay Rowdies over FC Edmonton. 
John Smith's getting a chance today to play. We saw Elvia Zhigalai, Dino Gardner coming on. Maybe next Sunday, a couple of runouts for uh, some of the other young players. We just saw some of the future lads coming through the reserve team. Yeah, and, and again, the, the player they feature there, Malin Roberts, is a player that I've heard Jeff Paulus talk about in very high regard as a player who he thinks he can, can play in NASL. Uh, there is there's a lot being built by this club. It's been a very disappointing season. They need to start building forward to next year. Again, with the split season next year, it's going to be so much tougher to make the postseason with only two teams going to be there at the end. Steve Sandor and Gareth Hampshire, live from Clark Stadium today. Thanks for joining us. Good night.